We are live, I believe. I'm going to see in a minute when it comes through and hopefully we can see what's going on. Um, someone say hello and then I'll know that you can see us. Um, welcome back, Mr. Watson. Welcome back to Valverde Broadcasting. Hello. <laughs> it's it's wonderful good. to be back. Very good. Um, Yes, so sorry, apologies everyone for the technical difficulties um, earlier. I'm just, sorry, in the midst of closing things off at my laptop because it's very unhappy with me at the moment. Um, uh, yeah, so um, welcome. Uh, it is another poorly put together on a technical level live streams because I'm in charge today and uh, as we all know, I am uh, a technophobe and an idiot, and um, also I um, have not long got home from having had this, my second round of root canal surgery. So, um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, but there we go. It says both of you. Colin says we're both really laggy. Um, yeah, laggy. Um, it's probably I'm not sure how to do much about that. Oh, okay. YouTube's not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. <sighs> it always seems to go Pete Tong when I have to do this. And I don't really know how to improve the situation. Um, sorry, everyone. I don't know. I don't know if it's because my home broadband's not good enough or if my laptop is unhappy with me but we'll persevere we'll have to persevere because I can't I really can't do anything about that um, at the moment so apologies for that um, yes very good apparently okay, we're yeah. a bit skippy like the bush Dummy. kangaroo <laughs> yeah. it's just been an average um, so, yeah. right well hopefully I'll just let me tiff up what I can close that will I don't think it will make a difference but Close off the things I don't need really open. See if that improves things. It might be that my uh, my laptop is a bit overloaded, but I don't think so. I think it's, well, it could just be the internet. Um, well, look, we'll persevere. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I really can't. Um, short of running outside and digging up the road and installing fibre, which might take a while. Um, there's not much I can do. So apologies for that. Um, but we are obviously we're doing the it's, it's the coconuts and string version of uh, Valverde broadcasting tonight. Um, and Brad has very very graciously uh, agreed to join us from his uh, his place of work, no less, uh, the studio. I am. I'm in my in my edit suite. I'm in York in my edit suite, working on a, a, a secret horror film. Um. But, uh, yeah, it's all coming together nicely. But, uh, yeah, so I, the internet here is a lot much better than where I live, so I thought I'd do it ah. in here. And, and there's a fridge hey, well, beer in it. So. There you go. Two for. I mean, it, unfortunately, it's all being piped through <laughs> my shitty internet, apparently. Um, so, <laughs> there you go. Um, apologies. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I, don't, I think Mark and I did have this issue, actually, the other the week. I think it is... I think it's. I think it's just... It's probably because also my wife is downstairs watching Netflix or whatever, so um, it could just be that as well. But um, ah. it is. It, uh, it's, 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 it's the thing is, it's um, it's home, it's home broadband. I think Richard has uh, fibre connection. We've just had fibre actually installed outside the house, but we haven't had the option to switch over to it yet. So we're on, we're on whatever we're on. But anyway, thank you uh, to those of you who are sticking with us. We really appreciate it. Um, and uh, hopefully you can hear us. And if your intention is to watch the film with us, then you don't need to see our faces. It's all good. You can listen to us say poo and willy a lot. Um, so uh, I thought what we do before we get started is obviously we, we put this to a vote uh, in Patreon. And um, the, the very loose theme was um, sloppy seconds or whatever, um, or whatever, you know, difficult second album. Um <laughs> Based on the idea that you know the each respective Bond actor's second um, outing is James Bond, and I thought that that would be a perhaps interesting route to take. It was partly based on the fact that Omar really wanted us to do uh, this film, as it turned out, um, or or a View to a Kill, which I know would have been right up your alley, but certainly 
down mine. Um, so I, um, <laughs> I, I said, well, what we'll do is we'll, we'll put the second films in. So I thought what we could do is do a very quick uh, cover off of the ones that didn't make it through this evening um, before we start the film. Um, the first yeah. one, of course, being from Russia with Love, which uh, seminal Bond film, I think. What would you say? Oh, well, that is my. If you were to put a gun to my head and say, "What's your favourite Bond movie from Russia with Love?" Yeah, would be it. Me I too. love from Russia. Me too. I adore it. I think it's just it's just got it's just got some fantastic filmmaking in it, and um, you know it's such a step up from Doctor No, um, and also John Barry is let loose with the score and comes up with the not just you haven't got just got the the Barry version of the 007 theme, but you got the you got the dub uh, the James Bond theme, but you got the 007 theme as well, which is a, a particular favourite of mine. And if I ever got to direct a Bond movie, that would be in it. It would be a, that the uh, yeah. da, 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 that would be in it. Um, but uh, the uh, yeah, but I yeah, I love from Rush with Love. I love the my favourite section of the of the whole movie is the is on the train, not the actual fight. The it, build up. It's fight. a masterclass in tension, isn't it? That yeah. whole yeah, it's incredible. And the whole how how Bond is testing Robert Shaw constantly because he doesn't trust him, but. Robert Shaw keeps passing the test with flying colours, but there's still something niggling in the back of Bond's mind. It is brilliant the way the way they play it. It's fantastic, and of course he's right. He's right. It, but it, it's but Robert Shaw is amazing in uh, uh, in covering his tracks and coming off as as his contact. But uh, yeah, I, yeah, I love yeah, him. Yeah, same. I mean, I think right. I would. Uh, it's difficult when you say like favourites and all that. You know, it's very hard to kind of pin all that down but I would have to say um, certainly of the Connery era probably of the Connery Moore era you know um, that's probably my favourite one yeah um, definitely I mean it's such a it's such a different film as well because it's weird I mean Doctor No I actually came to appreciate Doctor No quite a lot more uh, on recent viewing um, I do like Doctor No a lot I think it's actually got a lot going for it but um from Russia with Love is such a it's quite a big change in a lot of ways it's a, it's a real like Cold War thriller you know it's because I, again I guess they were yeah. swayed by the kind of Cary Grant stuff and the you know and um, North by Northwest it, had, it obviously had an influence on you know because he's kind of running away from a helicopter um, so but it but it's it's yeah it really plays more into the kind of thriller and the espionage and that kind of stuff um Whereas, which is weird, because I guess you wouldn't necessarily think it would go that way around. Whereas Doctor No, Doctor No does have some of that, but it is much more fantastical and about you know a villain with a lair and a um, I want to take over the world, Mister Bond. Sort yeah, of thing. It, yeah, it's it's funny because everyone everyone credits Goldfinger with mm. the one that sets that that Bond template, but I think Doctor No is 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 hugely yeah. that template as well. And from Russian with Love steps away from that template briefly um, by just being more of a, a straightforward spy Absolutely. espionage movie um, with some funky things in it, of course, like knives that come out of shoes and things. But uh, but it, it's um, yeah, I, I love I love it. I love yeah, from Russian with Love. Absolutely, great. me too. Um, so I guess next it would have been Man with the Golden Gun because we leap for obviously the. the George Lazenby didn't get a look in for he did not do a second Bond film. Um, so, Man with the Golden Gun, what are your thoughts on that? I know you. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that oh, no. I know you. You didn't even think you had a Um I, <laughs> I, I have a soft spot for Man with the Golden Gun. It's, I, 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 it's, it's a, it is a lesser Bond film, really, but you've got Christopher Lee. And you can't you can't go wrong yeah. with Christopher Lee. I mean, you literally can't go wrong with Christopher Lee. And uh, so, so Scaramanga is a fantastic, um, almost shadowy version of Bond. And in um, and in, in fact, that's a thing that they play with in in License to Kill that we're going to watch as well a lot, a lot. But um, but the villain where, where the villain and Bond are he's almost the same and 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 just just through circumstance they've gone there i think you know, i think he's one the way or the other silver. but uh, uh i think uh, he's the 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 you know i actually think yeah. 
Happier yeah. by Then in Skyfall is basically that character. Yeah. Yeah, Rango, yeah. So yeah, so so obviously I love I love it for him. I love it for um uh, I, I love yeah. Nick Mac. <laughs> Nick Mac's great. And um I also and Penny Whistle aside, the stunt of the car jumping that, that twisty uh, a broken bridge is one of the greatest stunts ever committed to film. It's yeah. astonishing. Just turn the volume down when it does it, so that you don't hear the penny whistle. But, um, but uh, uh, so it's. It, I think it's a lesser film that has some spectacular moments in it and some great things going for it. Um, and there's uh, yeah, I do like it and a lovely bombastic brassy score from from Barry on it as well. And the song is very brassy. Absolutely, and hilarious. Yeah, no, I, I um, I'm a massive fan. I, I am. I, I have a real soft spot for Man with the Golden Gun. I do like it. It gets kicked around town a lot, and I don't really understand why. I think it's, um, it's got a lot going for it. Um, it's Sam. Problem is sandwiched between two, what I consider the, the two yeah. of the greatest more bonds. You know, and so it's sandwiched between those two. You know, because I love Live and Let Die, and Spy Love Me is a bit Bond after. Yeah, so it's so it's 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 sandwiched in between two very high quality movies. Uh, so so I think that's why people give it a bit more of a bum deal than it deserves. I don't know. It's more procedural, isn't it? In in not necessarily in terms of its yeah. plot or anything, but I think in terms of its tone and uh, the story they're telling uh, to a degree. I think it's kind of Bond gets mission, Bond goes on mission. Bond wins the end kind of thing but it does have the personal stakes of you know it's well I mean obviously it's not it, it starts out appearing to have the personal stakes that Scaramanga's got a vendetta against him and obviously it turns out it doesn't um, but it was more yeah. Adams all along but um, yeah I mean no I, I, I really like that and, Gone, and I want to see a bit more of that kind of it's difficult because it kind of I like the idea of there's a world class assassin and he wants to take on James Bond thing um which doesn't hold together when it's like, yeah, but James Bond's a secret agent and no one should know who he is. Um, but then, obviously, it's kind of like, it, even in that film, it's like, well, actually, that's not really what's going on. And you kind of find out that it's not. But it's, um, yeah, no, I, I, I love it. And, and you know what? Yeah. Sheriff Pepper gets a load of stick. Um, but... <laughs> you can't... Yeah. Clifton James is great. He's a great actor. And yeah. he's, he's brilliant. I love it. I, I love him. It's 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 stupid that they bring him back, yeah, but it's like it's like Jaws yeah. and Moonraker, you know. It's like it's like hey, the the, the kids loved loved him, yeah. so let's bring him back. And um, it, he does it. He, he's he's great. I love him for sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, okay, well, jumping forward, I guess it would be this film. So we'll skip that because we're going to be talking about that in a bit. Next would be Tomorrow Never Dies, which we have we've talked about before off air, haven't we? I think. <laughs> which we yes. Yes, I think we both agree that uh, that it's it's probably one of the most underrated Bond movies yeah. out there, and it uh, people people always seem to think that Golden Eye is far superior, but I disagree totally. Um, I think the only thing that lets it down is the final act. The final act is not great. There's no doubt about that. But the first two acts are if if the final act was as good as the first two acts. It would probably be the best Bond movie ever made, in my opinion. I think the first two acts are stunningly good, and it's got one of my absolute favourite pre-credit yeah. sequences. One of the best ticking bomb scenarios I've ever seen. It's it's so good. Where you know the arms bazaar, where you got the missile that's going to take out the whole of the arms bazaar. Every all, all these guys, and and then and then after the missile's gone, Bond is, Bond sees that there's a nuclear warhead on one of the planes. And it's like, oh my god! And they try and try and destruct the missile, but it's out even of though it's still sending range. video back and, because uh, you can still and, see the video from the nose cave. But we'll even though it's that. Sending, yeah, <laughs> sending video back, but who cares? It's, it's amazing because there's a missile coming in to blow them up, and Bond's got to get those I, nuclear warheads out of there. And not only, it, it, I, I love it's it because so it, it, it throws you straight into. The, the, bearing in mind, it knows its place, right? Because you've had Goldeneye, you've been introduced to your new James Bond. Now this is him doing his thing, and it has a sort of 
minor link to the rest of the plot in that the encryptor is there, but basically it's a separate mission. And it introduces you to Admiral Roebuck um, and uh, the Russian guy, whatever his name is, Adam and M. And that dynamic is set up in that kind of war room place. Like it's not, it's not clear if that's M. I think it's Ministry of Defense, isn't it? They're not actually at MI6, isn't it? and it's like, and like you say, it's just this great. The stakes yeah. are really clearly yeah. laid out, you know. But it's all it's all the white knight, white knight to black bishop, in, and all this yeah. stuff, you know. This, yeah, this is the jester, <laughs> you know. And the, uh, it's all that stuff, and and the whole fact that Bond is just represented by this little camera for the first mm. sort of part of, and 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 you're listening to them talking to Bond, you're listening to old Watson and Colin yeah. Salmon talking to Bond, but you're not hearing Bond on the other side. It, I love, I love those sort of the intros of Bond in a movie. I think are very important, Absolutely. and I think it's one of the best. And I, and I and I'm certain, I, I've I've heard people slag it off. But I, but I don't understand why. I think it's it's fantastic, uh, and um, and then I think the rest of the movie just, as I say, the first two acts just carry on that yeah. gusto, with one of the best action sequences within the with the BMW in the back back seat on, on, in the car I park. Think, yeah, I've I've heard people criticize that's that just, as well and say, like, "Ugh, BMW, ugh, that's like a car your dad would drive." And it's like, yeah, but. It, it, it makes sense. He's supposed. He's posing as a banker going to a. It's like why would he? What, if he rocked up yeah. in a you know convertible or whatever, I just think that's. I don't understand the hate that that gets. It's yeah. like it makes total sense, and it's just sort of. Yeah, but who? I don't. I don't care. Who cares? He could be in a. He could be in a Robin Reliant. If that action scene is still staged the same way as it is, you know, I don't care the make of the car. That action scene is is top notch. Yeah. It's so good, even to the point where where Pierce Brosnan's Bond. Actually, laughs at a moment of cheekiness where he's, where he, yeah, to and then he brings back, back around again. He goes over the, the stingers, and then the other the car chasing him goes his own his tires. They get and they get so much plate. out of and you see they, they essentially get so, so much good. out of one level of Brent Cross car park, right? Because all oh, they did was change yeah. the numbers on the pillars and then just use the same. I no, I agree, and I th- I think two people. I mean, aside from. You know the cast because I think Michelle Yeoh is fantastic and Pierce Brosnan obviously, um, I, but I think two people really make that film stand out for me. And one is Vic Armstrong because it's the first time he directed Second Unit, um, and he yep. nails it on that. The action in that film is yep. fantastic, oh, okay. and um, um, David Arnold, who it's his first score and, and it is yep. just insanely Scored. good, Scored. and he Scored. uses the whole you know, yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah, the brass thing. Oh, so the, Barry, it, it's, it's so good. yeah, it's so good. So, yeah, so good. yeah, he channels John Barry yeah. perfectly, um, and 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 makes it his own as well. And that's the secret. If you as you know, I'm sure we're going to talk about scores because obviously Michael Caine yeah. did uh, License to Kill, and um, you know when you as a composer stepping into Bond, you've got to channel Barry. You've got to. Yeah. You've got to. You know, people. You know, you've got to. Be, Sorry, if you don't, you're an idiot. <laughs> and uh, David Arnold got it perf- I mean, perfectly. I don't, I don't perfectly mind right. the Thomas Newman scores of uh, Skyfall and Spectre. I, I think they're fine, but they're playing more in the pool of modern sort of Dark Knight. I think they're generic yeah, action they, scores. They run that risk. I mean, I do think, I, I, th- I don't think they're terrible. They're I, but, yeah. And they're of a piece, but I just don't, I don't know. I'm not, I, they certainly don't have the bombast that I think. But then they're telling a different well, story I, as well. I mean, forget, you know, no, absolutely. But I, but I'm, I am of the as, as you know, and I'm sure a lot of people who've heard me harp on about this stuff know that you know, for me, music is so important, and and there's a there's a symbiotic nature between what the score's doing and what the picture's doing and the rhythm of the edit and all that stuff. And, and there are certain composers that do what the John Williams and the and the the, the uh, Jerry Goldsmiths of this world did. And John Barry was one of them as well. John Barry's up there as one of my favourite composers of all time. He's superb, not just his Bond stuff, his other stuff as well. And um, and David Arnold has got that gift of of getting that dramatic, those dramatic nuances right. Hundred percent. The Thomas Newman stuff, it just it's a bit wallpapery. Yeah, it's just a bit that. wallpapery. It's fine. It's not. It's not distracting. It's not like Eric Sierra's no. score for Goldeneye, which is just goddamn <laughs> awful. Um, and it's and and to me, degrades the movie. It distracts yeah. me from the film. It's so bad. But um, but the 
but uh, but yeah, it's just yeah, it's okay. It I, I, I just yeah, I mean, I, I do think um, you're you're so right. I mean, it's a symbiotic thing, but I think that I, I just would like to see a bit more reveling in the bond thing, which we just don't get. I think everyone's still in that mode of trying to shy away from. Oh, it's not cool. It's just not cool to be like that. And I don't think people really think that. I think you know when you, it's certainly in, uh, in that. In Tomorrow Never Dies, especially, really leans into classic Bond, classic. You know, just isn't ashamed to be James Bond. You know, and that's that's I think what makes it so yeah. incredible. Yeah. And it and it does and and it's probably one of the last sort of more Bond procedural films where it was just Bond on a mission and there's some personal stuff in there that's really well but I yeah. think the, the Paris Carver stuff is really well yeah. woven in there uh, and Dr. Kaufman of course the late great Vincent Chiavelli I love 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 that yeah. because it gives so much it gives so much <laughs> like to the whole like there's this guy who's just like that, banging on about yeah. how it's like I'm especially good as a celebrity orthodox and all this sort of shit and he's there and he's literally looking yeah. at this woman who's dead because of we, him yeah. and then it culminates in that really cold moment we've talked about that scene many times hmm. haven't we we've talked about that scene many times it's the tonal tightrope that that scene traverses and it yeah. does it perfectly how it's and it, and it ends with one of the most brutal moments in Pierce's, yeah. Pierce Brosnan's Bond where you know I'm just a, I'm, doing you know, a I'm just yeah. man doing a job, professional doing a job. Yeah. So am I. <laughs> and just shoots him in the head, and it's you know, and it, it's brilliant. There's so much behind that. Exactly brilliant. Just I goes, love that. Me too. Stuff. And shoots him in the head, and it's like there's so much behind that because it's like that's him telling himself as well that she doesn't. That's him trying to tell himself that she doesn't matter as well because he's like, yeah, so am I. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. And it's, oh, it's so yeah, it's, there's so much in so there. Dope. It's fantastic. No, I, I, well, we can talk about tomorrow night, guys. Um, till tomorrow. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then the last, of course, Quantum yep. of Solace. Um, we 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 didn't get to do. What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, um, my uh, the the action is so annoying in that film. It's it's so stupidly shaky cam that it's just insulting. Um. It's um, it's to me. It's one of the most incom- even though it's even though it's um, trying to set up a, a universe uh, idea for the Craig Bond. It's trying to carry on the story and set up this larger foe. Um, it it just it just feels like one of the most inconsequential Bond movies ever made. Mm. You know, it just doesn't it just doesn't have any weight to it, um, and. Um, it's, it's, it's all fine, but it's not great. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've kind of, I've never hated it. I think it gets, sometimes people put it right at the bottom of their lists and stuff like that. And I've never, never quite understood that. I don't think it's. No, it's not, it's not like Die Another Day territory no. or anything like that. It's, it's just. Yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never hated it. Um, I, and I, but I do think it, I think certain aspects of it disappear up its own fundamental um i think you know it, it sort of gets it plays way too it leans far too into the kind of art house thing which i just think is unnecessary i think i, I think as well is it's it's weird because it plays like firstly it plays like a kind of addendum you know it's like downloadable content rather than you know it's just this sort of it's like an yeah. addendum to casino royale it's not really <laughs> you know and it started this annoying thing of like for those three films right up to Skyfall it's like now he's James Bond no no now he's James Bond he's not James Bond yet no now he's James Bond it's like yeah. look he was James Bond in the Casino Royale it was the whole point of that final scene yeah like yeah it's like he's Bond now yeah. let's get on with it and and also and and sort of and, and linking it with the with the movie we're going to watch tonight is which where people I think give have now realised because um, Licence to Kill gets a lot more love now than it did at the time mm-hmm. and yeah. it, it was it it was um, you know it, this was the first Bond Goes Rogue yeah. movie and yet and every Daniel Craig well, film I was, seems I was to just be a Bond Goes which, Rogue which movie. used to be so unusual <laughs> didn't it it used to be what stood this out everyone's like he so quit anti- he's not James yeah. Bond anymore oh my god and now it's like that's basically his job is to not do his job or something it's like yeah it always starts with "Where's James Bond?" Yeah. That's fine. We need him back. And it's like so because I think what they're always trying to do. Yeah. I think they feel, 
And it's so it, it's quite a meta fourth wall breaking thing is they just feel genuinely like they have to justify um, James Bond. You know, it's like we have to with, with the yeah. film itself and a lot of the films as well tackle the whole thing of like, oh, he's not necessary. Mi six isn't necessary anymore. Blah blah blah. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like they're caught in a bit of a loop with regards to all that. And I think it's a shame because I would just love to see them just lean into it and go, do you know what? Full tilt. I'm not saying let's go die another day bonkers, but um, I think all that, again, I sort of reiterate my point about die another day, which is it's weird because you people love um, The Spy Who Loved Me and yeah, Moonraker gets kicked around town a bit, but not as much as Die Another Day. And you go like, that's kind like, of the same film. Like, like, I don't get it. It's like, all right, an invisible yeah, car, yeah. that one turns into a bloody what? submarine. It's like, what? why is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, no, they, they've told the same story so many times. I mean, you, know, yeah. you Only Live Twice uh, is, is The Spy Who Loved Me is Moonraker. Is you know it's it's you know it, it, you know and and that's kind of not the no. point, but uh but when you but if you but and but License to Kill was very much a, a movie that that did try to break away from that and and the only thing that lets it down is the is the insistence on a couple of bits and bobs that we'll we'll go mm-hmm. into no doubt but um but with with the with, yeah with Daniel Craig stuff and and don't, and don't get me wrong, like Casino Royale is is totally up there in my top four movies I. Adore Amazing. Casino Royale. Um, it's I think mean, I think Martin Campbell just knocked it out of the park, and it's the action is just stellar. The problem, but then like you say, it's like okay, we're rebooting Bond. This is the becoming of Bond. At the end of this movie, he's Bond. David Arnold whacks him with the Bond theme. Bam! Here we go. He's Bond. Then the next one, as you say, it's like oh, uh, it's not really Bond. And then and then you have Skyfall, where they're like, okay, again, we're going to get him out of this era. And we're going to put him back in. We're at the end of Skyfall, we're going to we're, we're literally going to have the leather door. We're going to have M in his office. We're going to have money, penny. We're going to do that. There you go. And then they still won't go. So they still won't do it. They refuse to do it. And that's that's it's kind of yeah, annoying. Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree. I think it's it, like I say, it sort of speaks to a kind of not lack of confidence, but kind of um, unwillingness to pay off. Um, what they set up, you know, I don't think I don't think they've quite paid off what they um, what what they set up with Casino Royale. I just I think they they've they kind of yeah. they just want to keep playing pool. in this pool of oh he's still building up to it, you know, and it's like oh, I don't know. Right. Um, I just have well now yeah, he's too well, old. He's building up. Too old. Well, it's they like, even say that in Skyfall, don't well, they? They're like, when oh, was it's he... a young man's game and you've missed a step and all yeah. this kind of thing. And it's like, right, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay. Was yeah. Actually... Um, I just have to say quickly a shout out to Andrew Caput, sent us £10. Thank you, as always. And my dad, Mr. Casey Senior, sent us £10. It says, proper film, what fun. Yeah. Um, so there you go. A, a slight dig at Richard, <laughs> I think. Uh, <laughs> Um, and we had we have had some questions in the chat, so I'm just going to roll back and check those out. Uh, Stephen Allen asks you, which Bond car would you go for? Would you want a Bond to drive? Would you would you want Bond to drive a Reliant Robin? <laughs> well, look, hey, they've had him. They've had him uh, 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 drive and a Volkswagen Beetle. De Chevaux. Uh, yeah. uh, no, that was a that was a two CV. Two CV. Yes. Yes. The Sid. Sorry, yeah, um, in uh, for your eyes only, which is really cool. Mm. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I am, I'm, I would, it would, yeah. You know what? I want the Lotus. I do. It's such a, it's such a dated looking car that looks, that thinks it's stylish. But I just, uh, I, I saw a picture. The, in fact, I was, for some reason, a, a picture came up in my feed on something of Roger Moore and Barbara back doing a, you know, having a publicity shot. And and Barbara Back is is lounging on the bonnet of the Lotus, and Roger Moore is just is like this on it, and, and I just went, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it looks it looks tiny. The car looks it tiny. Is tiny. You almost like he can't fit in. Yeah, in that. it's a very small car. But it's, it's, the, well, in yeah. fact, the bonnet is very small it. as well because it's a rear engine car. So obviously, lounge, yeah. lounging on the bonnet requires right. you to be yeah. quite a small individual. Lotus have just actually launched a new car. I can't remember the name of it, but they've just launched a, a sort of supercar looking car. For kind of sports car money, I believe. Right. So, um, 
because they've just they discontinued the cool. lease um, after after a million years, and um, they finally decided to make something new. Although you know it's probably the same car and with a different body, but um, yeah, no, it's cool. I have, I have, I have, I have one little car story though that's connected with Bond. One of my first jobs <clears throat> uh, as a when I was a second assistant editor. Back in the days when we did stuff on celluloid, you had a first assistant and a second assistant. Um, I was on um, Fierce mm. Creatures, the, uh, the, the pseudo Fish Called Wanda sequel uh, at Pinewood Studios. And, and the main first assistant on that uh, was Matt Glenn, son of John Glenn, who directed License to Kill and all the Bond movies between For Your Eyes Only and License to Kill. And, um, uh, and one day we went to the pub. Um, his, his dad, John Glenn, was out of the country and Matt was looking after his Ferrari. So he turned up at Prime Studios in John Glenn's Ferrari and we went to the pub in John Glenn's Ferrari and we came there around Prime Studios a little bit and then went off. This is this is like 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 I, I forget how old I was, nineteen, twenty year old me just just going, Oh my god. That's very cool. The film industry has never been that good since <laughs> to me. But I was like, yeah, flying around Prime Studios in uh, John Glenn's Ferrari. That was very that cool. was amazing. No, no, anyway. very cool. Yeah, no I, well I've I've flown around Pine Wood Studios in my my old BMW, uh, <laughs> uh, which is far less exciting, um, but very cool. No, I mean um, I, it's funny because I've not been to Pinewood now for a little while. Last time I think I went was to do. I'm trying to remember what the last thing I went there for. I think it might be Miss Marple or something. Um, but it's yeah because it yeah it's, it's changed, changed so much. A lot. I think. It's changed a lot. Well, you've got you don't use the old entrance in the old uh, the old entrance that you'd have probably have seen in in, in countless oh, yeah, carry-on no, movies. You go in um, whole, and they've made it into this giant. Yeah, you, a whole new big. Yeah, and it, and they build that entrance. I'm sure so that so that the first thing you see as you go through the gates oh, yeah. is the bond stage because it is. If you go through the first thing you see is the is the bond stage there with 007 on it, and uh, yeah, it's like a real proper Hollywood studio opening. Great. Yeah. I love no, that. I, I, I do as well, and it's because right. especially especially as an actor, when you when you're there, if someone's asked you to be there, um, it's an incredible. Well, if someone Sorry? if someone's asked you to be there as an actor, it's pretty special. You know what I mean? Even if you're there just to shoot an advert or something, <laughs> it, it's yes. pretty special. Yeah, no, it's, absolutely. It's got a yeah. sort of an electric feel, and as, yeah. as well, like obviously, because of course you walk around, it's like Goldfinger Avenue, Double O Seven Drive, or whatever, and you come. Kind of, <laughs> this is cool. Um, right, I suppose we yeah. should ought to get yeah. to the film because we can wax lyrical about um, about this stuff all the time. Rob, yes, I was in in the sparkle. Um, so, have you got your copy available and ready? I have. I am. I'm here. I'm, I'm looking at at uh, the MGM very logo good. right now. Very good. Right. Well, if your fingers are hovering, um, I will. Yeah. Count us down from, uh, I suppose, seven, because uh, James Bond, isn't it? Uh, Why not? Okay. Double O. Right. No. Um, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Watch the birdie, you bastard. Play. <laughs> you, bastard. you bastard. I don't know if I can do impressions to like, swap my face. I think, them. Is, this, is this the only... Is this the only Bond movie where where Bond says "piss off" to someone? Yes, uh, Guy Haynes in, in Quantum of <laughs> Solace tells Bond to piss off, but he yeah yeah he goes piss right. off. <laughs> it's weird how Timothy Dalton sort of has a bit of a oh. northern accent at times. I know. Right, considering I could have bloody killed you. Cool. So, what? <laughs> like, we, he's Welsh, isn't he? Because like, Americans go, "Well, you do You know, he's Welsh, and it's like Welsh people don't say bloody. Mm. So, I'm not sure why, <laughs> but fair enough. But hey, Timothy Dalton, man, um, I'm he's obviously become a bit of a re- renaissance, but people have really come to love him um, as James Bond in recent years. I I have been a Dalton defender my entire life. I've I yes, yes. People have had to, you know, there are certain things in this world that everyone seemed to be against, but I was for. Eventually. The rest of the world catches up with me and 
realizes no actually that was pretty good and Dalton is one of them Dalton's great I think yeah. he's great um I think, um I love this setup by the way this beginning the going to the wedding thing um <laughs> you know and you have an whole action scene with Bond and Felix Leiter in <laughs> top hat and tail well it's a great it's a great way to put them in <laughs> that think, scenario think... in a you know um in an impossible yeah. I love that as well. The, the helicopter would follow me written on it. But yeah, no, you're right. I think it's a great, it's a great sort of setup mm. for for it, and it's a great sequence as well. It's a real like just throws you in, and that's yeah. the, what it should be. You know, I, I agree. I mean, because this film for me for the longest time, this film kind of sat pretty squarely in the pack. It felt, you know, it was unusual. Yes, um, I, I think principally for being predominantly set in the states. I mean, I think actually that's quite a, an unusual thing. I mean, I know yep. when that Die did it as well. Absolutely, it's not slow. It's not no. slow shot in moving, and um, and it none of it was. It was all shot in Mexico. None of it was shot like the studios were in Mexico. They they didn't shoot at Pinewood for this one, um, uh, just to keep the right. costs down because costs were escalating. But but this movie cost. I don't think it was any more expensive than uh, Moonraker was in nineteen seventy nine. Like like like. Like not not adjusted for inflation, like literally uh, the same numbers. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so they were they were desperately trying to keep the costs down, and it's a good job they did because this movie didn't do that well. It did it did all right here, and it did okay in Europe, but it didn't do anything in the states, um, which is weird because they were trying to go for the American. It was you know it's it's my it's Bond does Miami Vice. Yeah, I mean it's it, um, it also had the unfortunate uh, thing of coming out the same year as. Um... Batman and was it Lethal Weapon two and Last Crusade. Last Crusade. Yeah. Um, so the American market was primed for something else entirely, and I think this this I, unfortunately was trying yeah. to do those things, but of course they just did it ten times better because they are those things, you know. And there's nothing yeah. against this film at all, but I think that's yeah. probably what you know it boils no. down to. It's just the wrong time. I think this over time has become much more popular. Um, you know, and it's and it's it is it is more gritty, and it isn't. Um, you know, um, I, uh, well, it's surprising that it did so well here because it it was a fifteen, right, it was yes, a fifteen course, rated yeah. movie because of the violence. Um, it was it came because it came out just before. I think it, I think it was released in June or July, and then Batman came out in August, and Batman was the first twelve right. rated movie okay. in the UK. So it came out just before the 12 rating happened. Um, so it was a full-on 15. I mean, and, and that that was unheard yeah. of, a Bond movie being a 15. So it was, you know, because the because some of the violence is pretty, because it's because it's going for quite a bit of realism, which is why some of the unrealistic stars, stuff is so jarring. Um, but because the majority of it this, is this pretty, slow mo- pretty slow straight shot of Felix, and realistic. It looks like and, some sort of, I don't know, I don't know what you yeah. call it, retirement. <laughs> but it, it's, it's got that well, Cayman scores going. Yeah, da, 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 it's it's probably like, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, here's the thing, because I think I think that the score in this opening sequence is better. Mm-hmm. Is the best part of it. I think the rest of the score is, and I and I I love Michael Cayman, and I mean obviously Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves is a seminal score. My personal favourite score is The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Right. They did for Terry Gilliam. Um, I did, that's just mm. that's like a masterpiece, um, and so I I do love Cayman, but I don't. I think they're remote. Like like when I saw this first this opening, I was like, yes, Cayman's bringing the goods. Cayman's bringing the goods because I think it's quite good. But then then for the rest of the movie, I don't. It's just it's quite. It generic. feels like him on autopilot. Doesn't really do I think, much in a lot of it. Um, just to say, the Wincon yeah. Exchange sent us five pounds. In the super chat says, <laughs> "What a terrible waste." Of money, <laughs> uh, quoting Sharky, obviously, because oh, Sharky, <laughs> uh, no, is it? Oh no, yeah. it's Living Let Die. Sorry, when you've got Quarrel Junior, which should be Quarrel because Living Let Die comes before Doctor No, and Quarrel dies in Doctor No, so they had to just call him Quarrel Junior in uh, Living Let Die when it should have really been Quarrel. Um, but Sharky is a kind of proto, well, not proto, but um, whatever the opposite of proto is. Quarrel, uh, yeah, with like a throwback yeah. to to him, isn't he? Because yeah. you like he's some kind of 
he's in the Secret Service somehow. I don't he's know. He's the CIA, don't really, yeah. I don't really know what he, that he is part of the CIA. I think so. Sharky. Yeah. But he's, um, he, he, yeah. But the, but the thing is, this whole, the, this, this movie is started from the, from something that was in the Live and Let Die novel, mm. which was Felix, like, again, bitten by, by yeah. a shark, and fed to the shark. So that's, yeah, so that's, well, I, this bit coming up is, is quite amazing, because this is Timothy Dalton actually, like, not, not the, not when the, by, when the plane is flying, yeah. it's a stunt man, when you see the, the wides, but this, all this stuff, that the plane is actually on the ground, on a, on a platform, so it's off the ground a bit, and this is actually, and they actually flew in the helicopter and lowered Dalton down to, to get those shots, which was, and apparently Cubby Brocky turned up on set and, and, <laughs> Threw up. It's like what's he doing? <laughs> in, in yeah. yeah, no, I know because yeah. it's, I know the, the, uh, again. People would think, oh, well, that's not so bad, you know. It's not, for, it's it's fucking dangerous to hang out of a helicopter. It doesn't matter whether you're, and and to be honest, the dangers are Very probably dangerous. more if you're close to the ground than if you're up in the sky. Because if you're if you if you've yeah. got a parachute on and something goes wrong, you can just cut loose and fall and use your parachute. If you're that close to the ground. Yeah. You yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So and then so this was such a cool sequence. I mean this and uh, and obviously Nolan copied it for yeah. the Dark Knight Rises, <laughs> grabbing a plane by the tail and then and then making it go vertical, which they did apparently by that. That's a that's a lightweight fake plane that is attached to the helicopter on both with with cables on both ends. And then they release uh, the cable okay. on that's attached to the nose, so the whole thing that's just playing cool. like that. Yeah, that's really cool. And then the yeah, two skydiving, yeah. Uh, two guys skydiving. I mean, it's it's awesome, man. I mean, it is such a great opener. Yeah, this is it, it's great. There's just there's just those little John Glenn cheesy moments of like or Felix like going with the two hats yeah, out, yeah, and yeah. Going, hey, like that. It's like if you, didn't, if you didn't have those little moments. This this whole sequence would actually be so slick and and cool, and these. These secret agents turning up at his wedding by parachute, having just captured the well, biggest drug baron in the world, and then off they go walk great... to the church with the with the with the uh, the girls carrying the trains of the ca- yeah, ca- yeah. gathering up their parachute. Yeah, like, no, it's, it's like, fantastic like, that. And I, did you know? What? I think as well, it's um, it sets up that thing of of like James Bond can't not be theatrical. You know, like it's like even at his mate's wedding, yeah. that no, absolutely, and it's like you've got to kind of lean yeah. into that. I think yeah. a bit, and uh, you know, I, you know, because whereas Living Daylights yes. didn't quite, and for good reason, you know, in, in a good way, but it didn't. You know, this one really wants to kind of, it does, it does have that element of sort of fantasism, but then obviously, very quickly afterwards, descends into a sort of revenge thriller, which is fine. You know, it's, I think it's really good for that as well. Um, and you need that. You need that fantastic yeah. thing as well to be the kind of camaraderie, or to set up the kind of um, uh, the relationship that he has with Felix. It's interesting though that they got um, Hedison back because the guy wasn't the guy in the last one called John Terry. Yeah, which is which is like so, yeah. He went, and went off yes. and played for. Wasn't he? Was he no the Slayer? Maybe. And then he played Probably football really. for um, football team. I think it was. I think. It was, the Slayer, an amazing, like very early eighties um, fantasy pop with a, with an epic <laughs> disco score, like and uh, uh, with Jack Palance drunk out of his head for most of it. As, as I intended. Great. To anyway, um, um, yes. Yeah, so yeah, so they brought back Henderson because, because Cubby met him at a restaurant and decided, and Cubby was like about a hundred and three at the time. So he thought David Henderson was still was still looking pretty young. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he looks like he's on a saga holiday for a lot of this, but um, but fair enough. But yeah, James, yeah. Uh, everyone in this, everyone in this talks like that. All the American, like the the um, was it Wayne Newton? With, bless your heart. Everyone's kind of got that mm. sort of yes, oh, yeah, bless Lillers. your heart, uh, James. <laughs> Damn you, Sanchez! <laughs> everyone's got that kind of whistly yes thing. Yeah, yeah. Sure. hell. Yes, As the, the witty yeses. Yeah, the the Robert. Yes, Robert Vaughan. Yeah, very much from the school <laughs> of Robert Vaughan uh, in terms of their s's in this film. Yes, Sanchez, Lures. 
James. You know, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so this was written by G. Wilson and Richard Mayburn, but I think Wilson did most of it because I think there was a writer's strike on at the time, so Mayburn actually and couldn't do that a lot. Seems to affect a lot of second so, um, Bond films, which is weird. But but certainly, yeah, yeah, so it does seem it to weird, a lot. It? Um, but but good. I mean, do you know, I don't think the I think the writing in this is pretty solid. I don't I don't think it's half bad. This always amazes me. No one really talks about this, but there's a, a plane just like the plane's just been dumped, leaning up against the building in the background, which which to my mind was always <laughs> like an incredible thing they did just for a little throwaway pan shot like down to. The, but then, um, yeah, like yeah. You say if it's a lightweight model, I guess it was easy to move around. But still, well, that's pretty epic. Just as an establishing. Yeah. Still would. Yeah. And uh, is it Everett McGill? Okay, well, so that, because you've got, yeah. you got Robert, so Robert Darby, who who I think is mm-hmm. fantastic in this film, he's always great. Um, obviously, at this time, most well known for The Goonies and for Die Hard. And it's the Johnson. DEA guy um, <laughs> yeah. is the other Johnson in Die Hard. Yeah. The two Johnsons from Die Hard. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. They're, they're not related, <laughs> as uh, as we were, as part of the revelation <laughs> in Die Hard. Um, I know, no, I know, that's cool. It is cool that they're both in this. I wish the the other Johnson had something to do because he yeah. has a cool sort of opening bit, and then he just sort of disappears off. Yeah, yeah, then um, he just disappears. Yeah, I don't get this. Like he kisses her on the mouth. It's a bit like what? Yeah. Is it, are you not? Is it some sort of law that you're not allowed to kiss James Bond on the cheek or something? It's yeah. The relationship here is interesting. I don't know if there's if there's an implication that they were once yeah quite lovers. Possibly. Don't know. It's 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 all very close. And uh, sorry, Carrie Lowell just walked past. Who like like she's hot, but like I prefer long hair on a woman. But man, when she when she when she cuts her hair in this movie, and I was at the age where I was like. Where suddenly Bond girls were not just that yeah. other thing in a Bond movie blew my no, mind. She is I mean, absolutely you're right. stunning. I don't think she, for, for whatever reason, she is the short hair um, goddess of yeah, yeah, no, very much so. Um, no, I think yeah. she's fantastic in this. And wasn't it? Wasn't the plan? Wasn't Paris? I think Paris Carver was supposed to be her um, in Tomorrow Never Dies. I think that was the plan was to bring back Pam Bouvier. Um, as as to be the flame from right, the glass, yes. I think. That rings a bell. Because in yeah. theory, um, so the in theory, the opening to Goldeneye took place before this. So in between the Living Daylights and this, the opening to Goldeneye happened with Trevelyan and everything. Because the start, once the end credits are over, it goes like five years later, right? And then James Bond's in the car with the woman who's evaluating him. Duncan, you're not trying. You're not. You're not trying to actually. I'm not code name uh, theory. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Get lost. No, 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 no. But they, but they said that like the point, the reason why he's being evaluated because M says the woman I sent to evaluate you is because it's supposed to imply that after he went rogue in this and uh, was fired and everything, the idea is that he's being reevaluated yeah. to be brought back yeah. into. Yeah. Oh, the original. The original script of um, no, absolutely. I, I'm I'm being facetious. They were actually trying to tie them together. The the um the because the original the original draft yeah. of Goldeneye was for Dalton. It was for Dalton. They wanted it was yeah it was to be Dalton. And, um, uh, it, yeah, it didn't happen. In theory, it took so long. In a parallel universe, we could have either had Pierce Brosnan, Brosnan, you know, great movie from. Um, living Daylights to Die Another Day or we could have had Dalton mm. Living Daylights to presumably Die Another Day although I don't know if he would have stuck around that long um, I know. which would you rather have had? <laughs> oh, that's, that's a that's a toughie I mean you can't you can't really because I can't I, 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 I feel robbed of more mm. Dalton performances I do I feel robbed, and I really wanted some, but but I can't not. Bro, as 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 crap as his movies became, and and I only mean the last two. Yeah. The the, the you know um, uh, um, 
the world is not enough just being criminally dull and then die another day being criminally stupid. Um, but but the first two are, are great. Um, I, I I still got a kick out of watching Brosnan be Bond because he's great and and I do love Bros I do love Brosnan. He's got a you just know that he's he's a, he's such a nice bloke and he's such a an affable guy that that just oozes across all his performances as Bond and you're just like yeah you know which is why it's great when he does the dark moments because he because he really suddenly switches into that um but uh but I do feel robbed of Dalton I I, I wish there was at least another two I think in an ideal Dalton world movies. we would have gotten I do. Um, Dalton through at least well look in an ideal world Dalton would have made four or five up to 95 then Brosnan would have taken over with Tomorrow yeah. Dies and then because Tomorrow Never Dies was the first one that was really written for him anyway yeah. like Goldeneye wasn't wasn't written written for him yeah exactly so we wouldn't have had that from, from then. Golden is really the only... It's always the way, the, the transitional hmm. bond. You know, it's like, it's like Living Daylights is definitely definitely written with, with more in mind, first of all, and then and then changed. And um, Which we haven't actually talked about a lot, but I, Living Daylights... I, I put Living Daylights above yeah, same. License to Kill. Same, I think, I think Goldman's performance is better in, in this, life. but I think I love um, as a film, I think Living Daylights is... Yes, yes. Cracking. Yeah. yeah, it's more of a, it's a classic Bond Bondian, but not too. Far. It it reigns it in a, a, a quite a lot. But you've got you know, and yeah, we, we, we talk, I think we've we've drunkenly watched it on on a couple of at least twice. And then every time we get to the uh, the fight on the cargo net hanging out the back of the bomber, you know, I <laughs> I can't contain myself. I I think it's yeah. I think that that's just incredible. Um, and the kind, of, and I remember as a little kid in the cinema seeing that and just being blown away by that that sequence. Just that's I, I, just I just oh my god, this is I incredible. Was, I want to say in my teens, I think uh, certainly my early teens, and I think I recorded it off TV and I gave it a go, and I loved the opening, Rock of Gibraltar. I'm now I'm talking about Pierce Brosnan where you just list things you like so it's like Rock of Gibraltar car chase you know <laughs> explosives boom I just thought something go oh. past in the chat uh, uh, from uh, um, that we're basically saying there is a third gold bond evil bond in the Rocketeer and I, I say I say Mika I, Mika sorry, saying, I missed Mika, the name of the person Mika, sorry, who went by but uh, um, yeah right I, I say, I say, yeah, yeah, here, yeah, here to that, yeah, because because that is what it is, and and Dalton is magnificent in the Rocketeer. I actually have the a, a still cellophane uh, you know, steelbook that. edition Blu-ray of the Rocketeer in here somewhere, and I haven't watched it, um, so I really ought to. Well, save it, save it. Oh, we need to watch, we, watch it when when I'm next round. I am so starved of. Um, yeah. Male companionship, which is a weird, yes. but I, I am apart from <laughs> Winston, who I love dearly. I haven't had a, I haven't, had, I haven't hung out with my mates in so long, <laughs> apart from evenings like this, which is fantastic. But, but properly, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Well, yeah, in a couple of weeks, do it. So let's, uh, let's do it. And yes, Indeed. we must watch well, the rocket. Of course, here. Benicio del Toro, and Anthony Zerbi. Now, Anthony is it Zerbi? Yes. Yeah, he. Um, he cropped up in Papillon, um, and I I only knew it was him because of his voice. Because and, and I was like, oh shit, that's, I'm sure that's because he's got quite right. a distinctive voice. And uh, he plays. Have you seen Papillon? Yes. The the, the um, Hoffman, uh, <laughs> the original. Yeah. Yeah, the, the original. There was a remake. We watched my life. There was a remake. You know, it wasn't bad. Yeah. I will say this. I think Rami Malek um, was a very good Dagar. I thought he was really good. But the problem was they, they got look, Charlie Humdrum. Right. Say what you will about him. I don't think he's terrible. But he's it, it was like sexy Papillon. And it's like, mm. really? And when they have to make him like older and disheveled, they right. just put this no. really awful wig on him. And it's like, no, it's sexy Charlie Humdrum. Yeah. Sorry, you can't, you can't get rid of it. Do you know what I mean? Because he, yeah. No, uh, that's because really, even in the original, okay, it's, it's Steve McQueen, so it's like, yeah, who's known for being, you know, a bit of a ladies' man, but 
but he's still, yeah. you know, he's ragged as hell in that movie. I mean, he doesn't look good at all. But in, yeah, but I love, yeah, I love that. Okay, that's fantastic. Amazing Jerry Goldsmith. Oh, was it Goldsmith? I didn't yeah. know that. Anyway, but Anthony Zerby plays the the guy, the leper colony, plays the main leper guy. You wouldn't know right. because obviously he's covered oh, in right. makeup and stuff. But yeah. yeah. There you go. Yes. Uh, but no, it's uh, Papillon's fantastic, and it was it was weird because my wife and I watched the remake, and then I was like, right, we should watch the original as well, and she kind of got bored of it. But mm. um, it's, but we watched that in the space of a couple of days, and I was like, it's weird watching them back to back like that because it kind of really it's like when you do the yeah. do a school play or you do a play, and then you watch the film of it, and you kind of get the story gets so ingrained in you in a, I did that with Death of a Salesman I think I watched the the film they made which was essentially the film they made of the Broadway play that at the time Dustin Hoffman and um, Stephen Lang and people were doing um, which is very good but um, yeah and it kind of it's, it's bad my, my thing now is if I'm doing a play of something do the play first and then watch the film later because if you do if you watch the film first you sort of tend to just copy what they did in the film yeah but, um, but yeah yeah it's always if you're gonna yeah if you're gonna attack material that, this, that you haven't seen yeah don't watch it's, it if it's if it's based on a book or something like that read book for sure yeah. but but don't watch the yeah the the, uh, the visual interpretation because yeah. it'll yeah, yeah yeah it will change your it will change your 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 unique interpretation of it and that it'll it will without instance, a doubt which yeah. is what you shouldn't you know allow time it's, yeah. I, I think one of the reasons yeah. why I think this film sort of feels less Bondian to me is the fact that he, he he never wears a tie and he only really wears a suit here and that's about it. Um, mm. Most of the time mm. he's just going for the kind of mm. Miami Vice cash look. Um, yeah. Which is kind of, you know, I, he wears a tux at one point because he kind of has to. He does, he does rock a, he does rock a good pair of, uh, uh, a good pair of pyjamas. True, yes. That's very true. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just sort of—they just look like kind of C and A suits. You know, they don't look. Nothing looks tailored in this, but then it was, quote unquote, the eighties. I, yeah, I don't think I think I I I don't think he's done a good service by the styling. No, but I mean, Living Daylight's a bit better, but, but I don't think Dalton ever really got yeah. to look that cool in terms of his clothes. Um, no, which is a no. shame. Didn't. and I don't think and that's and that's not on him there's just something weird going on with the as you say I guess the late 80s styling was just a bit weird and hasn't aged no, very well some hipster tits will tell you it was great the um the hair doesn't really work either like especially when he's in the casino later on and it's like been bouffoned up and over and like, yeah no you look it looks great here like the, I think the hair yeah. looks great here because it's kind of messy and, and it's not stuff, but you're right. When he's in the casino, he looks like looks like yes. Dracula. It's the widow's peak. Like, it's like widow's <laughs> peak. Like, it's, really it's awful that, that imagery of him turning <laughs> Della over and her just staring at him dead is is oh, so haunting. Yeah. She's just got this look on her. Well, yeah, because it's so yeah. sort of like James Bond's women, right? He can't protect his women ever. Uh, even if it's yeah. not his woman. You yeah. know? And, and I like the sort of implied history actually, also well, has yeah. that kind of role in that. But that's isn't that a thing from the Live and Let Die book that he he disagreed with something that ate him? Thing, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the whole. Yeah, that's the whole thing they took from Fleming. James Little is asking. I think. And then, and your, then your, your, um, he says, "What does your colleague on the stream? His name's Brad James. For fuck's sake, look at the <laughs> name of the stream. Macaulay. I don't know. Quite right. Call me Macaulay. <laughs> Macaulay." Um, uh, what do you make of Spectre which I've just rewatched? I think Mr Hinks could have made a better villain if they'd used him more Dave Bautista felt wasted what's a ye yes yes I think everything about Spectre is wasted um, it's there's some stuff in Spectre that I like I didn't I don't people when it first came out people really mm. ragged on it and I and I was like it's not that bad but I'm yeah, I, I, the whole it was all yeah, you know, it was all part of major plan things. It, it just, I was just sitting there going, oh no, come on, and I think um um, so he's saying 
Christoph Waltz was. No, Dave Batista. That's what he said. Mm. Oh, Batista, yes. Sorry, yes. No, Batista, totally. Batista's. Batista's great. I love Batista. Batista. He he's um, uh, um, uh, like he he. You could tell that he was learning his trade very very quickly in Guardians mm. of the Galaxy, and luckily he gets away with it because he's playing this, this kind of ridiculous, ludicrous, literal character. Um, but when you see, but but I've seen seen him like I saw him in you know Inspector, and his little moment in Blade. Yeah, he's great in that. Um, Twenty twelve eight. I'm like, this guy's, I'm, this guy's oozing truth right now. I'm, I'm really believing everything he's doing, and for you know, I, I bless him. I think he's really put in the, the legwork to yeah. train as an actor, and and I think it's paying off. So absolutely, I think that the the, the Batista character could have been. I know he was a henchman, and and then they they did it was kind of a from Russia with love call back yeah. wasn't it on the yeah. train and all that stuff but um yeah i think i which i think was wrong i think i think i think you're absolutely right he he deserved not to be a callback to to robert shaw he deserved to be his own thing you know, i think um he's like a more i i would say he's probably a more serious than dwayne johnson in a way like he's kind of got a more kind of it's, yeah. I, it just in terms of his choices of what he does, I love both of them. I I, I love The Rock. I think I really I really love yeah. it when he crops up things. He's so freaking charismatic. It's unbelievable. Um, but but yeah. I yeah I think I think Dave Dave Batista. I think Hinks. One of the most the standout images for me in the in the Spectre trailer was when they cut to, like there's that shot of, on the train in the train fight where Bond gets thrown through the door. The door swings shut again, and Batista just burst through the door like it's literally like, bang like the door yeah. comes out the way and he's just this yeah. force of nature coming out or whoever yeah. and um you know by all accounts a lovely lovely dude but like he was so intimidating in that film yeah. and it's like and i do feel like they used him really well in yeah. that fight scene but it's one of those things i think it, and i don't blame anyone for this because it's kind of like you've got this incredible formidable villain or henchman but what do you do with him like either you do the whole thing, you know, he gets he gets yanked out of the train by his neck, um, and then he cut, turns up later on with some sort of neck brace on and Bond and him have a showdown. Because isn't that the whole thing with Blofeld? It's like Blofeld, he, Bond could beat the shit out of Blofeld in a heartbeat, you know, um, but it's really the henchman that he's got to physically take on, and it's like so you could have had a much more interesting ending, I think, to Spectre rather than Bond just sort of shooting down a helicopter. At night, with a Walford BBK on a moving boat, yeah. I don't really <laughs> don't think so. Um, but whatever, um, and then sort of walking, doing that, and then walking up to him and going, "Do you know what? Nah, you're all right. I won't shoot you." Even though I can't have had any other intention when I shot at your helicopter than to kill you your over a populated yeah. area, no less. But now that I'm somehow conveniently standing mm. over you. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's like what, really, um, you know. But mm. had Hinks been involved in that in some way, I think it would have been a more interesting thing. And also, not having him just running around the old MI6 building looking for someone, you know, because I just don't think that works either. But you know, they supposedly rewrote that um, ending in haste because of the Sony hacks and stuff. So who knows? Um, but yeah, I do think I, th- I think more Batista more of the time. He's in a film actually. My friend. Did my friend produce it, Ben? I can't remember. He was involved in it somehow called Final Score, in which um, there is an Juan Piers Brosnan. Um, so there you go, another Bond hookup. Uh, but oh, Pet- Petter said, Petter Daniels says, what cool. Spectre got right was the feel throughout the movie, good score, the Bond theme performed by a flute in quiet moments and Bond's spine. Yeah, I mean, I do, I do think Spectre has a lot going for it that people don't really talk about. I think it does have a nice aesthetic. Yeah. Um, it feels like it. Again, you know, like, when you look back at the original ones as well, they were very serialised. I think cinematography has come and gone over the years with James Bond, but I think certainly in the recent years it's gotten mm-hmm. very good. I would say in the Craig era, you know, they felt much more like big movies. Um I, I think, I th- I think yeah. again. I think Tomorrow Never Dies had fantastic cinematography, and I think, um, and I think Goldeneye did as well. 
But I do think like World Is Not Enough feels quite blandly shot, and I think Die Another Day just feels like it was made in a really bad computer. Um, you know, yes. so they're quite televisual the way they're covered. Like everyone's centre frame, even though you've got a wide yeah. frame to play with in those films, which is weird. Um, yeah, but there we are. Well, I think this this movie is a little bit like that. I think this movie is a bit more televisual than the yeah. than the Living Daylights. Um, but I, but it, but it's not. I don't. But it doesn't annoy me. I, I don't. It's not. It, it it feels kind of fitting in in the more sort of the smaller grounded story that it is. Um, so I'm not. You know. Yeah, I would love it to be a little bit more cinematic, but. Um, it's not terrible. It, it, it's fine, but but the thing is, you you, you know the thing. I mean, the, the you know if we're, if we're going to talk about the overall you know tone of, of this movie and what works and doesn't, like like I love the the that they brought it down. Like like I love all, all Bond. You know, I don't understand people to say I don't like the city Bond. I only like the serious Bond, or I only like the city Bond and then like the I'm like yeah. I like all the Bonds. I like I like it when it's when it's doing its. I embrace its thing. it as a broad um, church. I think and I, and, to, and yeah, I appreciate I it. it. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. It's a it totally yeah. is a is a is a broad church. And the problem with this movie is, and 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 I like I like so much of this movie. I love so much of this movie. Um, is is when it, it it won't like for for example the the, the truck sequence at the end. Um. I think is is yeah. pretty much phenomenal. It's such a good action scene um, in, that's fitting for the kind of movie it is. But if it were, but but they have to put in these gags, like yeah. the, the truck doing a wheelie, which makes no sense whatsoever. The truck going on, on doing a doing a ski maneuver, sort of thing. You know, and it's like you don't need those. Just the momentum of this action scene, this fight on the back of a truck that. You know, Raiders of the Lost yeah, Ark style, that, going, going, well, you're going. Absolute, that's you're what absolutely you need. Right, you don't need. It doesn't get the excuse the of being of a certain time or anything like that, because, because, um, well, because uh, Last Crusade did it the same year. You know, it's having that pace. Because we did Crusade a few weeks back, and it was like yeah. we were just saying this thing clips along like you wouldn't believe, and it's like that. You're right. I think the mm. truck chase was done on that level and didn't rely on those even though you know i mean it's often talked about yeah. that they rigged they had done certain things to those trucks to make it um to make them drive on the side and then the, the, oh, yeah. the stunt driver just did it with the standard you know so it's done yeah. for real which is impressive but still you know yeah oh um, absolutely yeah oh still it's amazing stuff but it it, 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 it uh, i think i think it's the wheelie that is the real yeah. culprit that takes you out of the movie totally and you're like, you're like, why did you do that? Because the rest of the, because the rest of it is so well done and so tight and feels like a, a brilliant momentum. Well, it's done as well. Action movie, and that's what I love. I love scenes that are just on a on a moving object and it's just relentless. You know, whether it be whether it be a, a truck in Raiders of the Lost Ark or or the wing of a Boeing seven four seven in Die Hard two, which yeah. I love. But it, you, it's 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 just this fixed point that fixed just a normal fight but it's happening on this crazy momentum momentum forward moving vehicle and um two things here yeah i love it um, and i agree with you by the way 100 um yeah. obviously this is hemingway house so that's obviously plays a role when he goes yep. farewell to arms well that's not how timothy Nelson yes. talks but you know what I mean? mm-hmm. um, it's not a superman <laughs> you know, can't identify farewell. This. All right, there we go okay. well, <laughs> Or the ginger nut. Gets my favourite line is sorry, my favourite line from from uh, from um, M. Country is, Club. Well, yeah, so, so, but I love the setup because you see over M's shoulder and he's stroking a cat, and he lets the cat go, and there's cats everywhere, and it's like, well, it's a Blofeld moment, you know. It's you know, and it's and it's kind of right. because what I think they're yeah. doing in a subliminal way is saying, look, he, his he, his allies are about to become his enemy, right? You know, so it's that yeah. it's that that thing of yeah, and who yeah, who is who is the good side, who is the bad side? You know, is it just a matter of well, point of in view? In a minute, the sniper who, starts shooting at him, and he goes, you know, Don't, "There's too many people," and it's like that's his worry—not killing James Bond, but the fact that there's too many people who would see it. 
you know that, and that's the, that's it's I think they did it really well with Judy Dench actually with the kind of especially in the Craig era but even with the Brosnan one was the notion of you know I'll I'll send you to your death like you know she says it in Golden Eye she goes oh, but mm. I won't do it on a whim you know but I've no compunction with sending you yeah. to your death you know it's like this is the thing you have to remember it's like these are his allies yes but I'm sending you out to die like I don't you know that's that's it um, yeah. James Little says sends two pounds ninety nine says my bad for yeah. referring to Brad as your colleague. Um, Brad is my colleague, of course. We have indeed worked together. We could, yeah, my colleague. Come on, um, I'm happy with so my colleague. Don't, don't Benny Legend sends five pounds. Says thanks again for tonight, Duncan and Brad. I was wondering if there's an uncut version of this. Is it the Blu-ray version? Um, I don't know. I know there were a few cut scenes from this. Um, and I believe some of them are on the special features. Like there's a bit, you know, when he shoots the guy with the harpoon, um, it says compliments of Sharky or whatever. And then Sharky, I can't do. Why can't I do things that work? Because I can, had a drill in my jaw this afternoon. Um, compliments it's, of Sharky. Yeah. I, I can't. Would people say I'll do Jack? Yeah. Yeah. Which which is a bit, there was an extended moment of that. I love that laughing moment. or something, yeah. or like giving a wry grin. Yeah. He has a lot of that's right. Um, I killed you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure, but I know. I know it was. I know it, it was a very controversial movie at the time. They were trying. Yeah, because it was. It was considered particularly brutal, and um, you know, but it was a Bond movie. So, 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 what do we do? You know. So I know. Yeah, I know the um, the, the uh, ratings board had a, you know, mm. a lot of turn and frame yeah. on this movie. The Wing Kong Exchange not quite understanding how super chats work says you can have a fiver but only if brad says i love aquaman it broke new ground now y- the thing is you, you kind of gave up your leverage by giving us the you've already got um but you... <laughs> oh it could but be he's gonna could give be you another well, if look it's if you're gonna give him another fiver i'll say it so i love Oh my god, I love Aquaman. It, it, it was a groundbreaking movie. <laughs> we groundbreaking. Had, we had, yes. It, it's also head. We, we've made, I think we've got <laughs> lots of mileage out of the fact that you and I went to the Aquaman premiere and then you phoned Richards and just went on this giant rant yes. about what a piece of shit it was. Um, and then it made like a billion dollars and it's like, right, well, what do you, you know. I know. And you know what? You know why it made a billion dollars? Because more more women more women went to see that movie than yeah. than any well, other superhero movie. Well, because I think the same thing was true of the Dark Knight, wasn't it? It was the kind of I I, I sadly I think it was Heath Ledger mm. passing away, and a lot of people seeing it as oh right, well this is his last major role, and so they they went to see it, and um, yeah, it was because it was I mean that's hence you know Titanic was the big thing, wasn't it? Where you know that made so much money because yeah women went to see it so that you know get women on side kept going back yeah. you win absolutely 100% yeah it's, it's tough it's yeah. tough to do it it's tough to get it right but if, once you, if you do if you combine the the, the, the the popcorn traditionally kind of I guess male dominated genre stuff but make it something that, that, that the ladies like as well you then yeah, billion dollars here we come I'm going to have to, I, I don't want to do this to you, but I'm going to have to do it. I'm really sorry. I need a wee. <laughs> and that means leaving you on air. You can leave but, me on um, Don't feel like you have to say anything. They'll entertain themselves. And um, I'm just going to see you. You can do that. And I'll, I'll, I'll be back very as soon as I can be. I'm really sorry. I was hoping I could hold it, but. Go for it. Do it. They'll, no, they'll be do it. Do it. Sure it. If, I, if I don't. Um, so excuse me so so sorry I, I will of course return the favour uh, should you need to micturate I'll be right back I will collect on that <clears throat> ah cool well I guess it's just me and you guys um I'm at the moment now where he's he's uh, sneaking him. he's got um, what's his face in the in the pressure in the pressure thing and that uh, so yeah my memories of, of the time when this came out, because this was a this was a big <laughs> uh, entertainers, Brad exclamation mark. 
Okay, I can do a song and dance. I can do a, uh, um, but you don't, you don't want that. Um, the, um, uh, so someone, uh, Steve, uh, Stephen Allen's asked, uh, hey, Brad, what's your feelings on Moore's Bond? Too campy? No, no, not at all. Not for the time. It was, it, it was a different thing. I love the idea that the different Bonds have a different feel. I love the idea that that um, you know, and I and I embrace that as, as as Duncan said, and and if you look at Moore's earlier Bonds, um, they're actually pretty serious. He's he's pretty um, he's pretty uh, 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 serious in living, and then, and I think um, he did. Uh, so right, do you really like? That? Um, he really he, he really gets really silly when he, when he knew he was too old for the part and that's when it's kind of um, and, and yeah it's, Duncan's definitely too old for the part and, uh, and, and oh we shouldn't talk about Duncan because <laughs> he's back what were you talking about I was too, I'm too old for what <laughs> what am I talking about <laughs> no I was just being facetious yeah, uh, I was asked what I think of, do I think Moore's Bond is too campy and I said no I said that I embrace the, the the idea that the different bonds are different, have different tones, mm. um, and that, but I was also saying that he only got really campy when he felt too old for the part. If you look at his, you know, his earlier stuff, he's, he's been, even like Spy Love Me, which is one of the sort of most outrageous ones there is. He's 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 only he 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 has the the one liners, but he's actually pretty serious a lot oh, of the yeah. time as well. He's not. He, it's only really like, you know, live, uh, uh, View to a Kill and Octopussy, where he's really like going. You know what? I'm too old for this, so I look stupid. So I'm just going to behave stupid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think well, because he was even by that point, because he started when he was 45. You know. Um, yeah. I think Pierce Brosnan was around that. He was like 43, 45. Yeah. He looked good. Yeah, oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, same thing with Tim- Timothy Dalton was in his early 40s. I think he was like 43, 42. Um, you know, I actually think that makes the most sense. I, I, assuming you're going to make films every couple of years, I think that makes sense. I think you know, you kind of want someone who looks a bit lived in. You know, you don't want some young dude. Mm. I mean, you know, yeah. I think I think One can't, Craig yeah. and Connery got away with it yeah. because they looked older than they were, and I think that's. But you know, and it's a shame because I think Craig had much more. He could have done a lot more. Um, than five films, I guess it will be. Um, but um, yeah, mm. yeah, I think it. I think that's what you need. There, you need someone who just looks a bit more lived in. I don't think because I mean Dalton was courted for this when, in his twenties. You know, after Lazenby, wasn't he? And um, yes. said, "No, I'm too young," and rightly so, I think. You know, but um, yeah. No, no, absolutely. And Bro- Brosnan would have been way too young when they were first going yeah. for him. He would have, well, he would have I mean, been was only in his, I guess he was, yeah, he was in his sort of mid 30s, wasn't he? But yeah, even there, I think he looked too young. I think he, he was someone who. Oh, he looked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you look at him in, in even, you know, uh, well, you know, in the Remington Steel era, it's like, no, he's not. He's. You totally, totally see his potential to be Bond. Later down the line, but but yeah. but not yet. But of course, we all know the uh, the tragic reason that he was considered for Bond because his, his wife was in um, uh, only. Um, and then who unfortunately died. Um, died uh, very similarly to um, Nicholas Meyer's uh, wife, who um, uh, who Richard Richard will know. <laughs> Who directed uh, Rafa Khan Star Trek Two and wrote Star Trek Four and directed Star Trek Six? Um, but apparently, him and Pierce Brosnan had would meet in a cafe a lot and that's right. And, you uh, said. Be each other's uh, uh, sort of uh, yeah. Because of course, support Pierce Brosnan then lost his during that time. stepdaughter, her her daughter, uh, Cassandra Harris's daughter, to the same cancer, wasn't it? Ovarian cancer. She died of. Same as her mum. Right, yeah. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. So, so mm. shit. Mm. Bless him. I know. I love, I love this bit as well. 
Someone's someone's asking, do I, do I have an interest in no? Do I still have an interest in no time to die? Like, um, so you know what? I'm I I'm I am I do I do, but I get I get the reason for the question because it's like, you know, is it is yeah. it ever going to happen? No, I know. I mean, I I sort of. But uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping that when it comes out, that I'll click back into. You know, we've it's been a weird period, and you know, we're all gonna click back into it hopefully when it all mm. releases again. But yeah, sorry, Danny, you were saying that you love the this bit when he's it. when he's stabbing yeah. the uh, yeah. Oh yeah, the worst team bit coming up. This is this is great. This is classic um, uh, Bond inventiveness. What what I always loved about Bond is is when he's in a simple fight like this, like you know, it's underwater. And it's like, how the fuck do you get out of this? You know, you got these guys around you. They like, cut your, they cut your air supply. You, you're dead. You're dead. But he manages to get a harpoon gun and harpoons the plane, the seaplane that's taking off. So he gets whip, whipped away from there. I, I love that kind of inventive, simple way of getting out of a what seems like an impossible, impossible situation to get out of. And. Um, yeah, and then, then up he comes. And well, it's it's the bomb he's, uh, he's water skiing it's behind a plane. It's the, it's the fact that like, yeah, right. If you or I did that, that probably wouldn't work. But it's like there's that that sort of two percent yeah. extra that Bond gets, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But it just conceptually it it works. And I, and it, and a view to a kill has a moment like that you know, when he breathes the air out of the tire. No. You can't do that. But you but you buy it. You buy it. So I did that shot, by the way, the, the stunt guy grabbing hold of the the, uh, the plane is fantastic. Such a good dynamic no, I love shot that as well. And this was this was one of my abiding sort but, of memories, I think, of this film was this sequence of him sort of yeah getting away. Yeah, this is this is good. It's, it's good this bonding. Is good stunt work. You know I mean? mm. and yeah, and all this stuff as well, like all these aerial yeah. shots over good the, the keys and stuff. It's like look, that's a stunt man hanging off a plane. I mean, yeah. Well done, Tom Cruise and everything, but Bond bloody done it first. I know it's not Timothy Dalton, but come on, still a dude hanging off a freaking plane. <laughs> you know, um, James Morgan sent us nine ninety nine. Says evening, fellas. Hope you're yeah, both well. Apologies if this question has been asked before, but is there a certain line slash moment, etc., in any of the Bond films that you always enjoy slash watch without fail? What's your favourite Bond moment? Oh, that's. That's actually a really, that's an, an amazingly specific question that I don't think I've ever really given any thought to and can give a proper answer to because it, because I because I love so much. But but I do I do have to say, and this is one of the reasons why I love Dalton so much. Dalton's intro in The Living Daylights. It's just a moment where where you where they're they're, they're skydiving down to the Rock of Gibraltar and you don't see him again. It's about building up. Building up the uh, the anticipation of seeing the new Bond, and um, the uh, and and the the way it reveals him when one of the one of the double O's dies, and you, you hear him screaming, he's falling off the mountain, and it just cuts to Timothy Dalton turning yeah. like that and tracks in on it. It's 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 a great reveal, and I lo- I always love the reveals, and and it's and it's also one of the reasons why I love the pre credit sequence to. Um, uh, live and let die because there's no because yeah. Bond's not in it at all Bond's not in the pre credit sequence to live and let die and and it's but it's the new Bond it's like it's like Roger Moore's first Bond movie so everyone's like Who, what's this Bond going to be like but uh, well, you don't but then know, it's a bit of a let down to me when you don't find this because he's just in bed with, with a lady and it's like it's not it's just, much of a reveal I, mean, I, think, I, I, I agree with you I think I think that is probably the best introductory shot of a James Bond actor of all time I don't think there's a better one mm. um, yeah. because it's it's it throws you into the action I mean I do think I, th- I think Tomorrow Never, the Tomorrow Never Dies reveal is better but it's not the first yeah. reveal of a James Bond you know, no I love it not, yeah. it's a real shot so um, yeah but yeah, no, I, I agree. I, th- I I love that sort of that just that world, like you know. Mm. I, no, it works so well, um, so so well. Yeah. Yep. 
but it, it's it's also to to me the, the the going back to live and let die and that that pre credit sequence. It's you know, you're seeing all these assassinations happening, and then it ends with the with the guy tied to the you know in the in the voodoo ceremony and the snake coming at him. And you've got the music building, George Martin's strings going, going up, bit by the snake. And the, the music goes, yeah. he goes, and he slides down the pole. And the music goes, yeah. when you were young. It's and so, it goes into the song. It's, it's such, such a brilliant movie, way. That, that, do you know what, that film, yeah. why that film doesn't get more praise for being so different? Because it's so... Diff- I know it leads into the black exploitation thing, but it's like, just as a film, it's so, so different um, to everything that came before and everything that came after, you know? I mean, even, yeah, I, I suppose that's the thing, like, Man with the Golden Gun just just really leans into tr- traditional Bond, um, which I suppose is why it maybe gets grief uh, off... The, as, as you say, because it's sandwiched between two very iconic movies. Um, but I think... Mm. Um, yeah I mean that that Live and Let Die is just such a fantastically off the wall nuts thing it's like for the first time like it's implied that the supernatural exists in James Bond's world you know yeah. and you just have to yeah, do with that great. what you will you know, there's no <laughs> you know yeah, yeah exactly yeah. thank you go with it yeah so we're, we're we just missed one of my favourite my, my favorite things that Carrie Lowell does in the movie where where yeah. she goes are you are you are you packing to uh Bond and be going hey. and she just goes it's got a shotgun yeah, yeah, shot yeah. <laughs> well, like, it's, it's, it's great she's great she is such a cool oh, God, character yeah. she's great yeah, yeah. Senorita Bouvier like, well because and isn't her cover name um because uh, she, she's Pam Bouvier so she becomes um, uh, fuck's sake <laughs> what's her cover name she, um, um, Kennedy she's Kennedy because Kennedy's wife was a Bouvier and then when she married Kennedy became Kennedy right so that's why right. her cover name is right. goes, this is my personal secretary Ken, Ken, Kennedy a, sorry I, fuck that I should, <laughs> but yeah but she's a movie and becomes yeah. Kennedy because that's the just, name's you know, movie. but yeah no that yeah. bar fight I mean it's all very um, roadhouse isn't it all this stuff very yeah. roadhouse yeah. very 80s that's the, I like there's a mo- there's a moment coming up where, where Dalton literally just looks up at the strippers like between her legs, it's like he gets hit. It's like, he's like, like the guy comes in with a yeah. sword pitch. <laughs> he's great. I like, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I, I buy, I buy Dalton's in these fights. I think he, I think he sells it. I think this is the big coming out where he just, yeah, he, he just looks straight up at the, <laughs> the strippers between her legs yeah. as he's getting up. He's like, who's still oh, dancing? Like, like, this is so <laughs> sort of yeah. work a day for her. Like, I love, I yeah. love her shotgun blows a yeah. perfectly round hole in the, in the wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, like, it's so work a day yeah. for the stripper that um, she's just still dancing even though all hell is breaking loose all around her. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she just That's keeps it, going. Yeah, I mean, Del Toro is so freaking evil in this. Um, it's that we gave oh, yeah. her a nice. Oh, you can, like, like. You know, I, oh, God. Yeah, I would, I would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'd be willing to bet that that he said that and that wound David Harrison up. Yeah. You know, like the way he says that. So that's not. You know, that, that he just went. He gave her a nice honeymoon, and you, you would. You'd just be like, yeah. God damn. Damn you, Sanchez. <laughs> I I have a confession yeah. to make actually. Um, yeah. I treated myself recently. People we were talking about No Time to Die, and and I didn't I didn't cover my my feelings on No Time to Die about what we have invested in it. Um, I'm very excited about No Time to Die. Um, I think it's probably going to be the end of an era for me in terms of James Bond films because it's it's 
in theory going to mark the last Bond film with uh, a James Bond actor who's older than you. I think you know because it's always it's always felt <laughs> like it was it wasn't contemporary. It was uh, yeah. a world that was beyond me. And I think when they if and when they come to redo it, they're going to hire someone my age or possibly even younger. So I kind of I I see it as a kind of end of an era. No matter what they decide to do afterwards, I think it's going to be an end of an era. Um, and so I I. I don't want to put too much on it because you know who knows what it's going to be like. But I do kind of feel like it could be um, it could it could be you know it could be the last Bond film that I kind of see as uh, aspirational rather than um, you know. Uh, it's funny because when you watch a contemporary actor in something. You know, um, by contemporary, I mean someone of your age or younger. There's something lost. It's weird. I don't know. I maybe it's it's either it's either petty jealousy on my part, or it's it's a lack of connection because you're watching someone who's not got the life experience of you trying to. And some don't get me wrong. Some of them, I, I think um, Tom Holland, for example, is a fantastic actor. Whether he's Spider Man or he's whoever, or he's in that Cherry film, which I didn't really like, but I thought he was wonderful. Um, mm. it, it, the, the, there are people who are worldly and beyond their years and, and all that kind of thing, but I, I just think when it comes to James Bond, it's going to be difficult for me, I think, to watch someone my junior or my age um, play that role. It's going to be a different connection. Yeah, it's. It, it, it... It's the it's yeah. I mean, it's a thing that we that we all have. We all come to terms with at some point when, because we've all been we've all gone through these mm. pro these periods. People like me and you that work that work in the industry, but we all started off as kids that loved movies and just looked up to these 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 you know these characters, these movie makers, these everyone. They were all you know they, it was all a thing beyond us, but it was you know, something to aspire to. And then you get into the business and you start working and, and suddenly it becomes a closer reality to be not 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 be at the same level as these people, but you, you see them working and you equate it to your own working and you're like, Well yeah, that that's what I do. Like I'll always remember like when um like because the, the second unit director of this movie and and all the bomb movies since you only twice before Vic Armstrong show was Arthur Worcester. Now his son is a guy like Tim Wooster, who is a really good friend of mine, and was the photographer of my first I cinema met release him. movie. Lovely, lovely. Yes, guy. you met him. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And lovely, yeah, fantastic guy. And um, and he is he is at currently one of the most sought after, biggest second unit director of photography is going. He's done did all the Wonder Woman movies, the Kingsman movies, all all, all that stuff. And he and he did solo, and um, and uh, I popped on the set. He got me on the set of solo. It was probably about a week after Ron Howard took over, um, and I went went around all the stages. Uh, he got his one of his, uh, his his camera assistants to take me around them all with the pass and everything. We, yeah, and I went on the stage where the Millennium Vulcan cockpit was with the uh, with the big screen wraparound screen, and there was Ron Howard. And that was where the main unit was shooting. It was Ron Howard, and I got, I got to stand and watch Ron Howard direct for about twenty minutes. You know, he, you know, so he, he, he saw me once and grinned. He had no idea what was some weird person standing there watching. But I'm sitting there and I'm watching. I'm like, this is, this is Ron Howard. Now, you know, me, me and Richard have conversations about Ron Howard a lot. I freaking love Ron. Howard. Like, like he's made, a, he's made some clunkers, but he's. He's also made some. That's the thing, though. It's just like, brilliant. I'll take that. I'll just take the and, freaking brilliant one. Do you know what I mean? Like you, I think, I think people have the license absolutely. to make clunkers. It's fine. You know, it's absolutely fine. Absolutely, absolutely. When you've done, when you've done the the, the great movies he's, he's done, you, you know. But he, but whilst I'm sitting there and I'm and I'm watching him direct, I'm watching him running up and down, looking at this, you know, conversing with his script supervisor, doing that. I'm just sitting there going, and it's like I'm like. This is what I do. This is exactly what I do. You know, it's like this is here. Here I am watching one of my heroes, 
and he's doing what I did. And so suddenly you, you have these 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 moments where 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 your reality and this far off distant fantasy reality that we've all been since kids aspiring to mm. suddenly collides and you and you have those moments where you're like okay so uh, yeah I am I am I, I am really in this world and I do know what I'm doing. and and suddenly the, the 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 fantasy element suddenly goes away and suddenly the job is the job and 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 it's like you say, it's a, and it's 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 the same with age as well. As you reach a certain age, and you realise that you're the same age as so and so was when they did so and so, or whatever, and it 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 creates this this reality that you're uh, that, that that collides with your own, and you've spent your entire life with this veneer, and suddenly, boom, there's no veneer anymore, and it's it's an no, interesting. And, and it's funny because everyone very. <laughs> Bless them. I mean, it seems to crop up <laughs> with regularity. I mean, um, people, you know, Jack Duncan should be James Bond. That's very kind. Of I don't think that's, I mean, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah. If I if I get to direct Bond, then you know, then then yeah, Duncan well, will be Bond. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I'm sure. But, you know. Well, you'd have to drug the producers. I'm sure, but thank you. I I you, you, but I mean, <laughs> I, I only say that, like it's a it's a question of it's that thing of sort of alignment and flow and that sense of belonging. You know, like I I've been on a bond set very very I'm very fortunate to have spent five days on on a bond set and in a tiny capacity. But you kind of I all the things you dream of and you must have found this you know being with Ron Howard on a set a Star Wars set and everything he's like all those things you dream of like when you watch the movies and you maybe watch the behind the scenes stuff and you kind of go like, I, don't, I really feel like that's where I belong you know that's, I, I know like there's there's all sorts of things after, and I have to be good enough and all this sort of stuff but I'm just like you look at those movies you go I could do that I know I could do that and then when you get to actually be there not in the capacity necessarily that you want to be in but you know however you get there you're there and you go this is exactly as I imagined it and it was like that being on a Bond, bond shoot or Bond set they're so nice like honestly like Barbara Broccoli will talk to mm. you Ray Fiennes came and talked to me Judy Dench was saying hello to everyone you know and it, not because people were personally nice and affable but it, it is such a collaborative effort and I know they really go to massive yeah. lengths to do that um, on those films and you kind of go yeah this is what I thought it would be like and this is this is this sort of creative environment that you want to be in where you're yeah it's this mega thing but the actual sort of creative juices and the kind of the collaborative F, um, element of it is the same it's it's just like you're making anything else but you get to play with these massive toys basically um, so mm. I yeah, absolutely but like you say you, you, you... Yeah, you, you you're in, you're on the and when you're on the level with these guys, so like you, you everyone's on this set working and everyone's treated, um, you know, in as it should be in and and most sets are like this. Some mm. aren't, but most are. Um, we everyone's just treated. Everyone's here with a job to do, and whether it's someone who's who won an Oscar last night or not, you know, it's it's <laughs> looking at you. Everyone's here Barry. to do a job, and everyone has that <laughs> level of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no I, I 100% man 100% and I you know as well people I mean look James Bond is the, if you're a British actor um, that's what everyone throws at you I mean there isn't really a you know I think it's it's a, and, it, and it starts yeah. to sort of at times you start to go I mean I had that when I when I did Emmerdale they start saying oh I'm going to be James Bond you know the sorts of the jokes jokes you know Tim the director was sort of saying stuff like that and, you know just to sort of I think try and make me feel more confident I don't know because I was walking around in a suit because that's my and then he was like don't you know don't in case he's been James Bond anyway because, but you kind of but that's because that's what everyone goes to right if you're an, if you're an actor of a certain age and a certain type um, and you're British mm. that's what anyone points to and it's you start to go like maybe I is that is that what I should be? It, it, I mean, am I a failure if I don't do that? Like I don't know. Like you kind of go, yeah. what, what, and and it's kind of um, it's weird. It's a weird thing because I think it's. I guess it's because people just point to the most visible thing they can 
they can figure out you know and I guess in America it's are you the next Batman or are you the next whatever you know but it, it's always that thing are you, who's the next X, Y, Z and it happens it's, yeah. it's, it's such tabloid garbage really and it's like I think I, and it's usually very I mean all, all the all the Bond speculation is usually one the only the only, the only dead cert that everyone knew was going to be Bond was Pierce yeah. Brosnan other than that there was no all the speculations have always yeah. been wrong yeah true well look I said all that. I said all that stuff about no time today to say that everyone knows I like a watch. I think everyone knows Channel knows I'm a bit of a watch guy, and I have the the Piers Piers uh, Amiga Seamaster from Goldeneye. Um, but my dad very kindly bought me when I was very when I was younger, and um, being seeing as no time today is a bit of a you know a bit of a bookmark, a bit of a watermark for me I, I treated myself Brad um, and I got myself the, the No Time to Die watch as well which you can see there um, <laughs> yes which I picked up uh, recently so yes I feel very naughty because it, it was a treat but uh, there we are so that, wow you can you could you can you can tell me I'll how tell much you that off cost there, off there yes yes I mean people are probably <laughs> googling it now I did not pay retail let's put it that way um, <laughs> but yes it's not cheap um, but I treated myself for I thought I would um, because I've been working hard and why not uh, but yes yeah I don't know I mean you know it's silly silly stuff but I mean it's you know it's I, I just I don't know I do feel like it's kind of I, we're, we're at a crossroads I think James Bond wise and I I couldn't tell you. I mean, as well, when people sort of say, casting speculation at this point for James Bond feels so ridiculous because it's like, wouldn't the more pertinent question be, where are they going to take this franchise before it would be, who are you going to cast as anyone in any of it? You know, it's like, are you going to reboot? Are you going to, what what tone are you going to strike? Yeah, what's the vision? What's the vision for Bond going forward? What's the vision for. Yeah, what are we, where are we going to go? Are we, you know, what what tone are we going to embrace? What, you know, how do we bring this into the new world? If if there if 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 we do, or or are we going to go back? Or are we going to go retro with it, or or whatever? You know, I I w- I, w- I would totally not be adverse to the idea of doing period bond, you know, doing a, a doing doing one set in the. I 60s. would love that. I, I just I cannot see it because of the product placement. Because you know, how are you going to sell new stuff? Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It won't it won't happen. Yeah, no. It, it, he it, says it's a flight of fancy. So I would but no, I agree. I, it's I, what did I think of recently? Where I was like, there's two, there's a way to do that. I can't remember now. Ugh, that's going to bug me. I did have an idea around that, but yeah, I do think um, I agree with you. I would rather see them do that. I I, I would rather a period. On film, there's just, just a total Cold mm. War espionage, you know, yeah. Reds under the bed type. Oh, well, we've got we've got Dracula Dalton yeah, on the yeah. screen. Well, the I, don't, I don't like as well the the Bond James Bond <laughs> line. In this is really thrown away when he's when he's trying to introduce himself to Sanchez and he goes Bond James, Bond, and then just talks over him and it's like, oh, all right. and you kind of go, yeah. oh, that's a shame. But yeah, Dracula Bond, why is that about? <laughs> Because this is such good dialogue as well. I know with obviously that. him chatting, you know, and he's like, "Yeah, more of a problem than living it." You know, it's a sort of like. Well, the 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 sort the secret sauce to this movie, what make what yeah. makes it work so well, is 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 the Darby yeah, Dalton yeah. combo. I mean, it is. It's those two, and it's it's um, because you really. You really um, get invested in this, in this relationship setup, portrayal that's going to happen, whatever. And you and you and you you, f- you feel terrified for Bond of 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 him not getting caught out by Darby, but and you you also have a sense of you also, you also almost feel sorry for Darby a little bit. You're like, God, he's he's, he's you're going to get fucked by this guy. And you're trusting him, and it's and it, it and it's obviously you shouldn't feel sorry for a mass murdering drug dealer, um, but 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 the but the the, the 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 relationship between them I think is so well done, 
and it's 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 kind of in the script, but I think it's just two great power powerhouse actors mm. doing their thing. That you just you get you get caught up in it, and you get you have mixed feelings about it. Well, it should it's be great. Well. And I think that's as a, as a, as a, you know for a Bond actor to get to play that. This is personal stakes for him, right? This is a revenge mission to which he, you know, yeah. In, yeah. In pursuit of which he's thrown away his whole th- everything, his license to kill, his everything. He's on his own, and um, to avenge his mate. And and the only way he's going to accomplish that mission is by cozying up to the the person he wants to kill. You know, and he and he sets out to try and kill him. But he, I mean, it gets a bit silly in a minute when he's like, "I'm going to assassinate him through the window," and then ninjas yeah. turn up or whatever. <laughs> ninjas, ninjas, and it's a bit like, okay. Um, but obviously, that gets us to the point where okay, now he has to be a bit more. He has to indulge in a bit more subterfuge and um, be um, yeah, and cozy up to him. And that's a great place to put him because it's like, but that's but that's Bond all over, isn't it? It's cold blood. It's always cold blood, and that's what this has to be. It's like you know, it's far more compelling to watch him still want to kill Sanchez even after he's had to make him had to prove his loyalty to him you know that's what James Bond is you know mm. that's what spying yep. is it's like l- keeping that kernel in the back of your head that yep. says no I'm still going to do this even though I am I'm lying I'm putting on this veneer of, of loyalty to a cause and and it's like mm. how do I where's where's the line how do I you know maintain that um so it's it's hugely compelling and it's something that you know doesn't again this film doesn't sort of get enough credit for it's sort of like oh it's just a Bond adventure it's like no no it isn't there's, there's a lot more to it no. it has yeah it has a compelling thread to it that is that you don't usually get in a Bond movie and that's and I think that that's 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 what elevates this movie despite its flaws um, in in the upper mm-hmm. tiers for me no, and you know it, it, it is, and and now we have Q having his biggest role in in uh, well, in any Bond one movie of his now. Favorite he, film, wasn't it? Because he actually he, got to one location film. for once. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. He got to go on like, and he's in a lot of it, and he's he becomes a field agent. It's great. It's wonderful, and I think I think the banter between Dalton and and uh, and. Q is great because because Dolan is such a serious Bond, much more serious Bond. The odd quip, the odd one works really well. The odd one just isn't that comfortable. He's he's serious Bond, and and um, but I always think I always find his kind of that that the relationship mm. with Q is is great. Just the smirks and the you know the 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 respect, but not taking it too seriously. Aspect, which I think Brosnan took a lot of. Oh God, yeah. To be honest, I think in, in the way he he, he dealt with the I with love Q. I love the Q scene um, in Tomorrow Never Dies. I mean, I like it in in Goldeneye, but it feels like a much yeah. more of a sort of yeah. bog standard Q scene in Goldeneye. Um, whereas in Tomorrow Never Dies, yeah. it's the whole like he gives him that he's like posing as the yeah. the um, yeah. rental car guy. And it's, yeah, he's yeah, car it's just like, will you need fire? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. Yes. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> collision coverage, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, personal injuries. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but accidents do happen. <laughs> Frequently do with you. <laughs> it's just like it's just so sort of like oh yeah. Like, <laughs> Here you are, like, you know, it's yeah. just it's great because I think the difference is with, and again it's with, with Dalton and, and Brosnan is is whereas Roger Moore was was flippant with everybody, you know. It was, you know, he, he, even the villains. He was always flippant. But with with Dalton and Brosnan, they're they they're just they're flippant with Q, but they're not usually that flippant with anybody yeah, there's, else. There's a love. There. So it, so so it just you know it just makes it more. There's a more respect, a thing, I think, because because yeah, really like. like Connery. It's interesting because like yeah. Connery and Llewellyn were more contemporary. I know Llewellyn was, was a bit older, but it wasn't like it felt like he was massively older. They were more yeah. contemporary. And what's yeah. fit now is, of course, yeah. you've got a Bond and a Q who's younger than him. 
so they they've played that dynamic up quite well. I think I think it worked. The you know um, the Craig yeah. and um, uh, what's the face um, thing works. Um, That's really oh, annoying. Uh, Where am I from? Excuse me. Uh, Someone in the chat. Tell I've us. had my, I've had my jaw um, drilled into. That's my excuse. Brad doesn't have one. <laughs> um, it, uh, ben Wishaw. Ben Wishaw. Um, um, you know, I think that dynamic really works, and um, I think they've done a really great job with that. Uh, but they've had to, the thing they've lent into. I think the Bond Q thing, what what sort of now stands them out against the rest of them is they're both anachronistic, like because they've had to make even though they have that thing that banter in Skyfall about you know uh, innovation and youth and you know experience and all that mm. kind of thing. Um, what what I like about it is there's a they're both quite anachronistic people they're both throwbacks like Q is still quite a throwback you know he sort of walks around in his old cardies and his he schleps about and he's yeah. old school absolutely yeah he's an old yeah. guy even though he's young he's yeah. an old guy that works really yeah. well but yeah you're right I think you know um, when it got to Dalton and Brosnan the dynamic was naughty young man you know, especially with Brosnan yeah. has that wry look in his face. So he's, he knows he's always trying to piss off the old bloke, but he knows yeah. he loves him as well. Yeah. And certainly the world is not enough, you know, that send off, which yeah. was sadly sort of fourth wall, fourth wall breaking because obviously yeah. he died. Yeah. Shortly and, which was yeah. weird. Yeah. Um, Very weird. But, but you know, it, but it has a sort of, Thing. People could criticise that scene because he goes, I've always tried to teach you two things. First, never let them see you bleed. Second, always have an escape plan. And it's like, it's like he never said that to James Bond. It's like, he doesn't say, I literally said these things to you. He says, I've always tried to teach you two things. Not, I've literally written these things down for mm. you, but, like, you know, because some people criticise that. And it's like, he didn't say that. Yeah. It's like, yeah. wow. <laughs> it's like, subtext. People, yeah, yeah, yeah. like come on. <laughs> the point is, is like, I've always tried to teach you these things, you know. Anyway, but yeah, I mean, and I love that. I I love the dynamic between them. But I think Tomorrow Never Dies is the real kind of apex of that. Um, but I think, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I just saw a, a, mm. a, a question go by. Sorry, you. So like, I'm sure lots of questions are going through and missing them. But um, it's just uh, about memories yes, of, of Richard Donner, and I'm like, well, we. I don't think we've got long enough for me to go for me to go there, but um, go there. but uh, but Richard Donner is um, a huge influence on me, and um, yeah, <laughs> I, what can I say? I just love the guy, and he's he did the best director's commentaries ever. They were fantastic and um, so entertaining. Um, but as a, he's not given. Like everyone loved Donna and, he's, and and obviously now he's gone. Everyone, you know that that is you know, so relevant and and, and uh, obvious mm-hmm. in how everyone's talking about him. Um, but as an as an as an artist, as a as an actual direct a visual storyteller, um, he was. I don't think he's given the credit he deserves, um, particularly when you look at the way Superman is shot, and particularly when you look at the way the Omen is shot. And um, you know, it's it's he 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 knew his onions, and he made yeah he he just made amazing movies, and um, and and obviously he he dominated so many genres. Um, but I also say if you look at a movie like Scrooged, which is you know obviously a Bill Murray tour de force, but Donner's way Donner shoots that movie, and. Uh, and and uh, and it's the same with the Goonies as well. The way he he let he 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 had a great way of containing madness, making madness happen on the screen, but containing it. And it's and that's prevalent in um, in like the Daily Planet scenes in in Superman. Yeah, you know, just this overlapping stuff happening, but it's but you're getting the relevant moments coming at you. And um, he was a genius at. That. And he was also a genius at the Wonners. The Wonners, he's the Wonners he does in 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 Superman are breathtaking. 
particularly the, the the coming out of the Daily Planet, the whole end of day sequence of him and Lois, just the one shot that comes dollies through the whole thing and then goes to the ladies' toilets that, that she goes into, he gets his coat caught in it, and then now he goes and then he goes around again and he and then he go he goes to the to the uh, to the elevators and he's going, going down, going up, up, up. He dude, that, he he he, genius. he got and ca- he he was character driven, I believe, I think, you know, through and through. I think he he got that everything had to be character driven, you know, plot, everything came in the service of character. Um, and he understood yeah. his medium 100% and Superman will always be a beacon for that. For me, you know, when people go, Oh, the flying effects look shit. Or whatever, it's like, you don't get it. You don't get it. You know, when the whole, you know, you'll believe a man can fly. The point of that is not, that the special effects hold up, you know, and you literally believe it. The point is, the story, the the, the film making on display, because it starts with fucking Marlon Brando living on a crystal in outer space. I mean, of course, you know, it's yeah. about, you believe everything there. <laughs> the point is, it's character-centric. Everything about it is, is it speaks to a human truth. Yeah. That's the whole point of that character. I do not understand why people don't get it. As even the people who are making those films now do not seem to understand what makes that work. And and he got it, you know. And it's like, yeah, turn the world back, all that stuff, all the nonsense. It doesn't matter because it's more about what we're saying about this guy who has to be a beacon, you know, or has to show the has to be a mirror to the human race for why they can all do good and he got it he nailed it he absolutely nailed it you know and the visuals are fantastic in that that's film I, mean, I don't mean to do them yeah. down I do, th- I do think it all works really well but no absolutely well I would say I would say I mean I, I would say that some of the you know uh, uh, apart from the old dodgy yeah. optical comp I think the Zoptics oh. is it's it it looks it okay it doesn't look real like it doesn't look real but it but it, it's magical mm. there's a magic to it that is pure cinema, and and I would say and all, and sequences like 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 when when he's flying mm-hmm. with Lois, um, which which I just think is a tremendous you know Mar- Margot Robbie's uh, uh, narration included. I think that whole sequence is just magic. It's mm-hmm. cinema magic, and it is and and but the moment when they when they're on that live stage with the clouds beneath them. And they're both, and they're holding hands, and they're both stretched across the wide, the wide screen, and they're, but they're literally, their other hands are almost touching the sides of the, of the, of the frame, and they, and they start doing the diagonal thing, like that. I'm like, do you have any idea how difficult that was to do, like to time that, to do that on flying rig? We just did some flying rig stuff on on this movie here, and it was just, and it was simple stuff, and it's a yeah. nightmare to do that. And it, and it is and it is balletic. Okay. And it I've is always wanted beautiful. to do flying rig stuff. Got, I think as a result music. of it. It's yeah. cinematic. I watched um, Angelina Jolie do it yeah, but it, in one of those. You know where they have like a hula hoop around you and you can kind of rotate and fling around through the air. And I was just like, that looks so much fun. I'd probably puke, but I, but I was just like, I really wanted to. I really want to do some sort of flying character, even though I no, probably will. But I, I was just like, that looks. I, I always wanted that. That appealed to me in such a massive way um yeah. and then largely from superman you know Absolutely. but yeah that it's the thing that the shot that always gets me is the zoptic shot where right the, in his first night you know when he goes around so after he's just saved lois and he get that uh, dun, 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 and he comes in and he's just uh, and he and he goes like upside down and he goes and it's like bearing in mind that christopher reeve is just static and the camera's turning and then they're moving the lights to show that the city yeah. is to, you know, they're moving the world around him to make it, but his performance is like, okay, I'm going upside down now, and then I'm like looking up here, and then I'm coming yeah. back around. And Oh yeah, oh. that upside down shot, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, I'm surprised Brian Singer didn't do this yeah. in, in his movie. I'm surprised that hasn't been copied, like, like as a tribute, because that it's is so such, iconic. such a good moment. Such a good moment. He's like, if I made a Superman movie, I would, I would stick that in the movie at some point. Like, go here we are. It's easier for us to do it because we because we got CGI and all that bullshit. We can do this easy. These guys, it was like you say, all the interactive lighting and the the cameras upside down. 
the image is the right way up, then the image goes upside down, and the camera goes the right way up, and then you know, and, it's, and Reeve is in the middle of it, selling yeah. the hell out of it. It's 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 incredible, and um, it's little little moments like where it's like it's like there was no, it wasn't like okay, this is this is a shot of Superman flying. All right, quickly, let, all right, let's do it. No, it's like this is. They would have spent they would have spent days getting that shot to work, yeah. days, um, just 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 for twenty seconds in the movie, where in the script it says cut to Superman flying happy with the fact he just saved a cat, but it's like no, and that's one of my that's one of my favorite. They did shots this well. moment. He's just saved the cat, and he take, he says he's like, well, goodbye now, and yeah. he just takes off, and it's just that like effortless thing, and he comes at camera and he goes woof like over the top of it, and it just looks like he's oh yeah yeah. And that's on location. That's a crane. That's a, that's a crane off the street. And they, yeah, and, yeah. And apparently there was like there was all news stories about about um, people people on the on the New York uh, uh, freeway going down the, the side uh, the FDR that they were like seeing that's guy amazing. flying. Everyone's like there's people phoning in because because he got he goes right oh, really? out over the FDR apparently. But um, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So is it, so yeah, it's yeah, it's incredible, and that you know we could obviously waste you know so much time just mm-hmm. waxing lyrical about that movie and what how Donna approached it and how they 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 made it all work and but yeah you know he will always I mean superhero movies are okay. what they are today because of that man and and there's no you can't you know there's absolutely no way of um, of, uh, uh, of denying that, so so anyone anyone that's into their Marvel movies yeah. has Richard Donner to thank. And but he did oh, so much yeah. more. Yeah. As well. well, I mean, he produced the X Men films didn't he? as well. Um, but no, he, yeah. he's he, dude, he, yeah. I mean, yeah. he paved the way for a lot. Um, and and I think as well because he spoke to a lot of filmmakers who then grew up. I mean, Chris Nolan credited him a lot for Batman Begins and the Dark Knight sort of trilogy and he even had him I think on the um, on the uh, the extras didn't he for the, the Blu-ray release and stuff he had him on there um, talking about that. yeah and, you know the dude, yeah. the dude oh, was yeah. just he was a pioneer man. And, he, and he was and and well the other thing that he did that a lot of people don't know about is is you know uh, Jeff mm-hmm. who played Chunk in the Goonies um, who is now a, a super successful lawyer in 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 LA? Um, Richard Donner paid for his. Oh, his really? Went to go to law school. Richard Donner, Donner paid his 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 uh, his uh, his fees to That's become so the lawyer that he was, and uh, and Richard Donner didn't want anyone to know that. But you know, but, um, but yeah, he's a good dude, man. And I think that's probably what put him at odds with the Salkinds. I mean, not to be unkind to the Salkinds, but I do think, mm. you know, I, I, it's funny because obviously this is sort of 70s filmmaking and it's, things are things are different and they're not different, you know, at the same time now. But, you yeah. know, there was very much that kind of producers are like, money! And then directors are like, story and characters. And like, but money! You know, and it's like, the Superman of it all is so sort of incongruous because you kind of go like how the hell that film came out of the attitude of of um, the soul kinds you know I, and versus Donna versus Mankovic because well, he got Mankovic involved but you know Spangler as well there was that whole yeah. fucking thing going on in the background mm. how they signed off on Chris Reeve playing the role I'll never know because you know yep. all the other people involved um, Lynn Stolmaster obviously the, the casting director for Superman tells the story about how they how he came to you know find Chris Reeve and everything but it's like the amount of you know Redford Stallone fucking all these sort of names these sort of hot names that I mean Hoffman for God's sake like, all thrown around at the time and you just like it's the same thing. It's the same thing. I was, you know, we talked about casting James Bond. It's like you're just naming famous people that you like. It's not the yeah. same. That's not casting. Mm. You know, that happens all the time. It's like oh, but Michael Fassbender, oh Tom Hardy. It's like those are just names 
that you know they're not relevant to what was it. it's like this is what I say as well it's like what story are you telling and I, and I treat and it, you know it's been proven time and time again it's like don't cast bigger than the role Superman it's a bigger it's iconic you well, don't what they, put yeah, Ben Affleck what, what in a fucking it? Batman suit I'm sorry as much as I think he's great no Batman's bigger than Ben Affleck so don't put someone who's bringing all that baggage into it unless you're going to but that's the thing. That's what they ended up getting. What what they ended up doing so right, which was, which was, was yes, casting an unknown um, uh, actor who yeah. was perfect to be Superman, be that character, and having your big, your above the line marquee names as as supporting yeah. roles. But but yeah, they get top billing. They get more money. Whatever. But um, but that but that's. You know that's what happened. That's what was right, and that's what ended up being right. And 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 you have to applaud the Sulkins for getting the movie to a certain point where they had they had Marlon Brando and Gene Hackman in on board at that point, and uh, and uh, and that that was through their both. Yeah, basically it was it, it was the age where producers, particularly producers that were independent produ- filmmakers, because at the end of the day, Superman was. Kind yeah. of an independent film. It, it it slowly became studio controlled, which the Sultans didn't like and blamed Donna for in the end because of the cost was spiraling. But it was essentially it was, it was a negative pickup pick movie, yeah, so, yeah, which essentially means it's independently yeah. produced until you hand it over. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so that so so you know, and it, and it takes a certain. But I, but I saw a. I saw a, 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 a thing with Bridget Don. It was, a, I think, he was like an Academy, um, uh, uh, American Academy kind of tribute thing, where he said, where he was like saying that he, you know, he considers himself the luckiest man on the planet. He said, he said, I've never had to pay my dues. He said because everything has been fun, everything has been great. And then he said, and he said, there was a, there was some people that weren't, and he knew exactly who he was talking about. But he said, but even now, you know, now at the age I am and all that stuff, and I look back on that, and I'm like, these guys were just trying to do their thing, and it was, it, it, we didn't think it was the right way of doing it, but they were just doing their thing, and he, and he it was almost like he was like, I'm, I'm letting that go, and I'm not going to hold that grudge anymore because, yeah, because you can't, you know, and at the end of the day, that movie wouldn't exist without the Sulkins. It wouldn't be as good as it was without Donna, but and arguably, you know, the had it been made as a studio, have have. you know, purely as a studio film, it probably would have been, you know, dull and spreadsheety and not, you know. And so I, I totally yeah. get where that, you know, he's coming from. I do think, I do think the Sarkins, um, you know, and I hate, I hate to make, I don't like making bad faith arguments. I think, I think it's um, or assuming bad faith. Um, when talking about other people because I think actually most people like very few people will actually set out to do bad things you know people can be misguided but generally speaking yeah. you know and I, and, I, and I don't believe that the Sarkins were like we want to make it we just don't give a shit we just want to make loads of money and fuck everyone up. but no one yeah. thinks like that no one in the film industry thinks like that I'm sorry you know no. yes people are no. driven by profit um, because they see you know because uh, bear in mind when you're talking yeah. about hundreds of millions when- of dollars yeah, guess what? You have to kind of think about return ROI yeah, at some exactly. point. You can't just when you're in the when you're in the heat of battle, when you're in the trenches and things aren't going to plan and mm. things are going a bit wrong. Yeah, think people are yeah. going to clash. It's going to happen. It's like, you know, you can't get get away from it. Sorry, Carol uh, Carol Lowell was just in, in just yeah, come out of the water. And, and, yeah, it's quite yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it, <laughs> She's wonderful. She's yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Mm. Um, well, ex Mrs. Um, uh, Richard Gear. Well, Richard Gear. Yeah. She was married to Gear and yeah. Griffin I Dunn. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Fair From point. American Wealth in London. Um, yeah. Good honor. But, um, but, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so yeah, I can Me I too. can talk about Donna forever. Me too. Well, we'll <laughs> have to do that at some point. Yeah. I think, I think. 
think there's lots more to talk about than Richard Iron. It's yeah. just you know, I, I a lot of people have well, I've heard from people over the the last few days. Um, people sending me stuff going shocked, you know, going, Oh my god, can you believe it? blah 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 and I'm like, Well he was like in his nineties, I mean I'm not really even like mm. But he was, good on him, you know? The dude the dude Yeah. He was a sparky, healthy vib you know, vibrant yeah. ninety one year old and it was a shame he's gone because he yeah. But yeah, he was ninety one. And he had a good he had a good innings. It's 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 horribly sad, but at least at least he, he stuck around yeah. till he was ninety one. I, I don't even see it. It's actually stuck around for well. Connery and all those people. Like they they came, they did what they, I think, dreamt of doing, and they did it impeccably, you know. And I think, yeah, it's just I for me it really is a celebration. I sort of look at that and I go like, yeah, it can be done, and it can be done well, and it can be done with integrity. You know, the guy had such insane integrity, and um, yeah, that you know. We should all be so lucky, you know. I hope so. Absolutely. Yeah. Hurry up and hurry up and. So yeah. So so there's a there's a there's a Donna da, Donna Bond connection with Darby. Yes. Darby in the Goonies. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems to me that you know to, the, the Bond thing is very much it's like they're very loyal. You know. And, uh, excuse me. You saw that with um, John Glenn and people like that, you know. No, no you're not at all. No, I'm I, so sorry. I'm boring. I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm long days, <laughs> always long days when you have a baby. Long days. Who, a baby? No, I do have a baby. Who oh, will you be have one a baby. year old next no, month, yeah. which is insane. It's just that's nuts. Completely that's nuts. Ridiculous. Only, only married yeah. twice, I think. Yeah, a couple of times. Brad. In, in all this not able to come yeah. and be handed baby Casey for a bit um, but yeah I, I just mm. um, don't know what I was saying before all that but whatever oh because I'm tired <laughs> that's what I was doing yeah no but uh, but no I mean yeah I'm... oh we've got the moment the moment where Sanchez explodes um, yeah. explodes um, it's not, is it Milton Crest is that his character's name? Milton Crest? Zerby, Anthony Zerby. Who's yeah, Crest? That... I can't remember. Right. See, now what's more ridiculous, that or Kananga Balloon? <laughs> the Kananga Balloon, I mean. At least at least they at least they, they pay lip service to the fact yeah, that that was messy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I think it would have been yeah. would have been better without the <laughs> without the <laughs> crest balloon. I think that, you could have done without that. But I think yeah, if you just had the dog <laughs> like up against the window, that would have been awful. I don't even think. Do you know? I don't even think you need the whole yeah. gag of his head going. Like, I don't think you need that. I think you just need like ah, and like blood coming out of his nose no. and just going and a sound. You know, with good foley. Yeah. I think you could have solved that yeah, gag yeah. in a much more sort of yep. realistic way. Which is probably why they didn't do it, but I mean, um, yeah, yeah, the Kananga balloon thing is so weird because it kind of gets that. It, it's a thing as well where they obviously punch in on it, and it makes the whole film start go really grainy. Because yeah, it's like, it goes it's so like, grainy. Yeah, this didn't yeah, really work. Because really, they're obviously <laughs> like, oh my, God, this looks awful. We need to, we need to do something. Because he like, literally goes, <laughs> so <they're> like, yeah, <laughs> and then he explodes in like shreds of. <laughs> ribbons it's like what that's not what that would look like I mean for starters he's making a fart sound because all the gas is coming out of his bum and then does he like if he exploded there'd be a lot of blood and guts everywhere I don't think you get away with just like he grows <laughs> it's like you can't you won't You'd probably you probably spit it grow. out you would stay the same size and just you would expand a bit and then explode you wouldn't like grow this giant and there's <laughs> there's pictures of it on set as well bearing in mind this is not some last minute decision there's pictures of this thing on set this um, you google it google image search that right there's a picture of it lying by the pool with its eyes out like it you know like going like this with his eyes out it is the most ludicrous thing that they put and it's just like 
I, I can't get over that. I, for me, I think that is one of the most dumb... Especially because it's in such a great film. And you kind of go, that's how you kill the Bond. I know, I know. That's always, that's always been the thing with the Bond movies. They, they, they're always... They, the, even the best ones, the, like more often than not, mm. they'll always just be something <laughs> that will let you down. Just something. Where you're just like, yeah, in this, why in this, it's, do you do that? Like, in this is anthropomorphised so fish statues. For some reason, they have a massive thing about <laughs> yeah. Um do you, What do you I, do you... Yeah. Well, the, also with this, is the ending. The very ending of this movie completely yeah. ruins it in terms of the, 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 the harsh, gritty tone that they've gone for, where then all of a sudden it cuts to Felix sitting up in bed going, yeah, I think Q's got yeah. a job for you. Maybe. That... You're like... Guys, you just your wife was killed. Why world. are you happy? And then the fish weep. What? what the fuck? Is that there's just a tonal problem with the where the people walked out out of it, going that was a rubbish movie because it's not. It's it's a, it's such a good movie in so many respects, but that ending, the tone is so mm. wrong. You just like and it ends. It ah, starts this weird thing of right? um, ending on that on a love song because Goldeneye does it as well, but it ends on a really pathetic. Like, if yeah. you ask me yeah. to, and ask it's just like you, you, um, and it's the same. Like, <laughs> Goldeneye has that the, the by it's an Eric Serra song, isn't it? The something of love, and it's like do do do. It's all fucking oh. stupid. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I think the. The the song is better than yeah, that one yeah, for sure. But um, it, looks, it at least has a hook. Yeah, it's very easy, but at least it has a hook. Um, Dalton in this, I think. I think you know. Yeah. I think James Bond should be in the kind of shape that Dalton's in in this. Like he's he's in very good athletic shape, but he shouldn't be like. I, I don't want my James Bond to look like he's been down the gym he's loads. Good. I yeah. know that's massively popular at the moment, but it's like, and I know the next James Bond is going to be hewn yeah. from granite. But it's like really like what like just to sell <laughs> men's health magazines. It's like that's not I don't buy that. That's not what James Bond would look like. You know, it's like the whole thing of the Terminator being an infiltration unit. What is Mister Universe? It's like well, in that case, I, I've said this before, but I'm like you know, I think I give it I give that a pass because it's like the machines thought this is what an human looks like. You know, they were like people won't buy it unless yeah. it looks like a perfect human because that's what a machine. And so yeah, you get what. But Cameron changed, yeah. Cameron changed the, the you know the infiltration idea. You know he he knew that that's not what Schwarzenegger would be, so he became just a tank that people were going to go, what is that? But but it doesn't matter because he's just unstoppable. He's he looks human enough to get to a certain yeah, yeah, point. Yeah. No, I I, then, I know the original thing was Lance Henriksen, and, then, and then, he was supposed to sort matter. of be totally uh, uh, innocuous. Yeah. But I think it works when you kind of go. It's a machine logic. It's what a machine thinks. Like, yeah. That most humans walk around just thinking that yeah. the perfect human would and, blend in perfectly. You know. And, and and also, and also, it's it's a it's a human body type that you can fit, well, quite, fit a yeah, machine exactly. into. Yeah. You know, like it's almost like practicality dictates he's just got to look fat. like an extraordinarily he's buff be guy because he's a freaking <laughs> machine. There's no in between. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but my my thing with James Bond is he shouldn't be like yeah. a hench. I don't think he should ever be that massive you know I mean Craig, don't get me wrong it's great. Craig's in great shape and good for him but I kind of no. go like I don't think he should be ripped I don't think so you know um, but yeah no no no. he shouldn't be he should be yeah like I say he should be he keeps himself in shape and he's and, yeah he, he can handle himself but but he's not yeah he hasn't got time to be down the gym well, he's, and he drinks too much and he you know I don't think yeah. he's, he's not that guy is he and and most of the time, I think the thing with James Bond is like he should be, you know, he should be posing as an investment banker at a cocktail party. You know, that's mainly what he yeah. does. It's you know, and that's again, that's a sort of incongruous thing, I suppose, about something like Tomorrow Never Dies is the fact that he's in one breath he's just sort of infiltrating some Rupert Murdoch guy's cocktail party, and the next minute he's dual wielding guns around a fucking I just have to say this amazing false perspective oh, yes. miniature yeah, here yeah, yeah. with the, the going in the thing that's like yeah that that that's just a false perspective miniature 
which Bond Bond did false perspective, perspective yeah. brilliantly. No, hundred percent. No, no, no. Sorry, Thank you for pointing that out because I agree. I think that's and and again, this film doesn't get. Uh, the right credit for that kind of stuff um, but it is there you know there's a villain's layer and it, and it is you know it's present um, I don't know what I was saying so who cares uh, it can't have been that important <laughs> we were talking about this and, and, and he shouldn't be too be. Yeah, that's, that's really insane. Look, he's wearing a mask just like no, we do he shouldn't be down the gym yeah <laughs> I know this is the Bond Bond says wear your mask but Darby and Dario don't. But yeah, but they're not. Yeah, it's like they're the they're the, they're the guys that are gonna stay. That's because keep their the Colombian man, they have immunity to the powder. You know, that's what I say. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I don't know. That's probably shouldn't say that. But that is, <laughs> I'm just I'm doing I'm doing fucking Scarface. Aren't I? Hey, what's it, who's it? Um, Dana Carvey <laughs> does that great um, Scarface thing where he's like. Was it uh, yeah. Tony Montana at like Thanksgiving or was it Thanksgiving mate? Past the can of corn. I wonder what no what is he oh, I can't remember that. There's a whole thing he does a whole fucking skit about Tony Montana. Pass the sweet potatoes. Pass the sweet potatoes, man, and a can of corn. I like a can of corn. I don't like a can of corn because it gets stuck in my esophagus. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> Dana Carvey's impressions are never accurate, but only but they are in the sense of like no. they're, they're so spot on to the kind of cat. like he does Quint obviously from Jaws, yeah. and it's just the whole like he's going he's, yeah. to water. Yeah. It's just like it's so sort of it gets the energy of it really well. You know, it's so good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great, great caricatures that like really hit hit, hit the nail in the right place. <laughs> I love it, yeah, William. Bless your heart. <laughs> and of Bless course, you. he's a dirty sleaze bag because he started a really. I mean, is it, look at the guys in the robes oh, cool. just standing there. It's just like, what is this? <laughs> and then the plan is to. So the plan is to dissolve cocaine in petrol or gasoline and. And then yeah. sort of somehow reconstitute it into what really amounts to sort of icing sugar. Because yeah. when it when he tips it out of there, <laughs> sort of here, look, he puts it through filtration paper, and out comes icing sugar. And it's like probably mm. probably some more steps involved. I think. I mean, yeah. I can't snort that. Yeah. So yeah. So next, <laughs> now. Yeah. Now what? That looks that's like a lot of money to me. That looks so like now I could what? seal my windows, but it doesn't look like I could. I could put that on <laughs> yeah. my hooter. When does, um, when does that become thing that people yeah. shove up their noses? That pay a lot of money. <laughs> when when yeah. does that happen? Yeah, you've kind of shut, I, still a lot of water. I feel like I'm seventy percent of the way there. Yeah. 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 But I'm not. <laughs> Congratulations! It's a solid. It's become a solid again. Well that's, done, that's Sanchez. Happened. Now, but, uh, what happens after that? Also, highly flammable, I've got to assume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As Sanchez himself is going to find out later. In a, in a horrific... Oh, God, yeah. Burns to death. Burning. I mean, the fucker burn. He's only lucky that yeah. he fell into the... Uh, it's great. Into the tanker and exploded. Oh, the Wing Kong Exchange gives us five pounds. Here's my, here's my donation to the Dr. Joe Foundation. <laughs> Thank you. Bless your heart. <laughs> Bless your heart. It's actually, it's actually cool. And and for those, and for for his one for Richard, that in the same year you had a Star Trek movie that had a villain based oh, on really? the same concept, the TV event. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Yes. The uh, Final Frontier. The uh, it was based. It was um, William Shatner had the original idea of watching a TV evangelist. I have nothing against Star Trek. I, I would say that for the record, I have nothing against Star Trek, Star Trek whatsoever. I'm, I'm all, I'm, I'm all for it. I just like to take the mick, really, because like it's, just, it's one of those things I don't understand. It's like football. I don't get it. <laughs> so I just take the bit. <laughs> but I would, do you know what? I, I would. It's not what I'm against it, and I would actually like to sit down and watch them properly. Um, 
at some point. We should do a proper a proper watch of the of the the proper the track the, the good track that we should. That I consider this is this is going to be that this is me, the me you, Richard, Mark Price, Geary. We're all going to get together, and I think we should have an evening where we watch a Star mm. Trek and a Bond, and then that way, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We we indoctrinate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, yes. He, yeah. See, I because I feel like the, uh, the 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 really the really weird in between person because because I'm as at home talking Bond as that's I am perfect, Star Trek. That's, that's the it's perfect like, place to be. Like, where I can. I would love to be that guy. Yeah. I'm just, it's not that I. It's not that I hate Star Trek. I don't hate Star Trek at all. I, I've watched the new ones, the JJ Abrams, the, the Calvin, uh, and thought they were. F- freaking wonderful so I, I have nothing against them whatsoever um, and I have nothing against the older ones you know, I'd, I'd quite like to see them to be honest um, so yeah we should do it we should absolutely do it <laughs> absolutely yeah now, now we just have yeah it's this place that they that they filmed this it's like it's like this weird uh, Indian you know uh, Native American tribute uh, place that was built and never used, and it's just like a white elephant that sits in the middle of the Mexican so desert or place. something. I don't know. It's, 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 yeah, okay. yeah. The, the the exterior, the con- that concrete exterior. It's a uh, yeah, and no one real knows place. where it was built. It was it was it was built as a, a tribute for the to the Native Americans of the okay. area. But they, but no one uses it. It's like it's so high up in the mountains, no one uses it. Well, at the time, I don't know what it is, what they do now. I mean, but at the time, apparently, it was just, yeah, it was just sitting there empty. Hmm. It's weird. There's loads of weird places like that. Though. Mm. Some of my um, my friends are into that urban exploring stuff, and in fact, Richard and I did that with um, uh, RAF. Uh, what's it called? Upward, RF Upward, which you can watch the video of on our channel. We went around there thinking we'd film a short film there because it was a great free location. Uh, it's since been demolished, but you can check it out on our channel. It's really freaky. It's an old RF base that was sort of abandoned in the nineties, I think, and it's all kind of rotted. Mm. And, uh, it's pretty cool, but um, yeah, there's loads of fascinating places around the world that have just been abandoned. In fact, we filmed some of Erica in places like that. They were they weren't abandoned, abandoned, but they were all like one of them was an old animal. Well, it was an old. A lot of these things. It was around. Um, not it was in Iver. No, it was in Slough, which is again where Pinewood is, and um, and as Pinewood is too, it was an old. There's a lot of like old abandoned sort of manor houses that have been turned into other things, and then eventually become yeah. sort of film filming locations because there's what else can you do with them. Um, and um, yeah we shot a lot of Erica in a couple of places that were like that that had originally been a manor house then it had office space built into them and then it had other things one was a laboratory and then um, yeah it was weird oh that's awful that's that shot of like gut like grew hitting the screen and then you cut back to Benicio Del Toro and he's still freaking alive (laughs) and it's like oh he's being eaten by a crusher it's like blah it's yeah it's a pretty sadistic mm. killing it's a uh, yeah it's crazy right I'm I'm gonna Is I'm gonna PP take dropping you off I'm leaving you alone Very good. have a quick toilet break I might have you another beer because we're nearly at the truck oh, check shit wanna get, be get ready yourself for truck trace ready truck trace ready um boys and girls girls and boys um let's have a look and see what you're, you're saying in the chat um Steve Allen says, can you just do a script read of a Star Trek script called Our Man Bashir? Don't know what that means, but sure, why not? Um, I think I said this, I, so we, I, obviously I did a commentary upon this film with uh, our previous co-host, and I remember saying, I think at the time, that this, I was like, this is a big layer, this never gets referenced, but this is a big sort of Bond layer ending, right? Um, is that Kellefer? Who's that? Not Kellefer. Uh, anyway, and it's like you know things are burning down, everything's exploding. It's a big layer. It's just not covered 
in the same way, I guess, since it's not, not as much is made of it. Um, but it's pretty cool, man. It's a pretty cool ending, and I and I and I, I love all this stuff. Yeah, I think it's it's so well done, and it doesn't get enough credit. You know, this film doesn't get enough credit for what it I think achieves and what it does, and where you know, and and it, and it really does distill the character of James Bond. Um, so yeah, uh, Miss James Atkinson, Mission Impossible Watch Party. Yes, I would love to do the Mission Impossible films. I'm a massive fan of those. Perhaps not the first two as much as I am the subsequent ones, but we should do it. I just think Richard. Is, well, Richard needs to get over his scrot rot first, and then uh, gooch rot. Sorry, and then uh, let's see. Finally, does. We'll do it. But no, I'm, I'm a big fan. I mean, look, it's a spy genre, isn't it? That's why I, I think Richard is, is less keen on. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> and by that, of course, I mean, fuck you. <laughs> um, yeah, with, uh, we're just saying in the chat, talking about Mission Impossible and doing some stuff on that. And I agree. I, I love the, the, the Mission Impossible franchise as it stands now. It's fucking amazing. Um, I, I, arguably, I think from the fourth film onwards, I think the third film is very good too. But um, Mission Impossible Four is where I think it found its stride, and four, five, six have been incredibly good. Yeah, the Brad, the Brad Bird yeah. one, Ghost Protocol, and then uh, yeah, and then the uh, Macquarie ones afterwards. Macquarie, I think, is the best action director around yeah. at, at the moment. I think he's he's fantastic. He's I, I love the action scenes in the Mission Impossible movies, so I'm really looking forward to the next ones because because cause they're, the they're delivering. They're Canada, always they're delivering. The shooting back to back, I think. Yeah, no, fuck yeah, man. Mm. I think it's. I think it's. I'm. Yep. I'm down. I think they're doing. You know, I won't say that they're doing James Bond better than James Bond because I don't think they are. I think they're doing their own thing, and I think that's the point, isn't it? They're doing the spy thing. Yeah. But they're doing it Either. with very much a sort of American flair. Yeah. Um, and the thing as well, like I mean, yeah. thing, like Mission Impossible and Fast and Furious as well, are massively Anglo-centric. You know, they keep filming in Britain when they have no reason to. I mean, other yeah. than you know, of course, it's great. But always I think, here. I think yeah. um, we owe them a lot, and we don't really talk about that enough. And I think they're both they're, they're all incredibly they yeah. doff their cap a lot to to Britain and and the culture here and. The fact that we kind of birthed those kind of films, and I think that's I think that's really cool. I don't really, really, yeah. you know, warms my heart. I think that they, they want to come back and talk. Cool. Um, Stephen yeah. Allen says, uh, Duncan question, Duncan question. What do you think could be the future of spy movies? Like how Goldeneye was post Cold War. What's a good target for spy flicks to move in? It's a really good question. Um, because I think and that's that's the one thing I'll say is like the Mission Impossible stuff, obviously does big spy extravaganza right and I think James Bond has felt like it can't keep doing that because it did it you know it started it and I think that's where Bond struggles potentially although I don't think it has to I think it could still compete on that but um, but I get why they, they feel that way um, yeah I mean the problem with the spy, the spy genre is, is definitely going to su- suffer, as most genres do, with um, with, yeah. with the technology, the way the world has gone te- technology wise. Because you know, because like like the whenever you're making a movie now, whenever you're writing a movie, one of the first things you got to do is how do we get rid of the mobile phone? How do we how do we you know because the because the ability to call for help, you know, if you want to put people in peril, you. We've all got we've all got a way of calling for help not wherever just that, we are. We, so we can, the, the older so this stunt was coming up with the with the truck going into the side of the mountain. That was a mistake. Oh, yes, that wasn't supposed course. to happen. There and they oh, and they yeah, wrote yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. The whole front yeah. thing comes up. Yeah, no, sorry. it's, it's freaking cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it's fantastic. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, so that so and I think the spy genre definitely suffers from a lot of that because it's because spying now is literally people sitting yeah. and thinking, no, you know. It's like with, with this movie right at the start. It's like, it's like, it's like Bond doesn't know that Sanchez has escaped until he gets to the airport, and and the uh, the checking yeah. girl tells him, you know, it's like it's pre-mobile phone, 
it's like it's like whereas now you'd be like that can't happen because someone would have called Bond straight away. Sanchez yeah, not only that, but he would have. It's it's not even that. It's the fact that you can Google things from your phone. It's like you, the, the whole thing about James Bond being an expert in butterflies or whatever. It's like it doesn't have to be now. <laughs> Because yeah. everyone's got that knowledge at their fingertips. Everyone's got yeah. the knowledge of the world at their fingertips. Yeah. And so, you know, I mean, it's, it is difficult. Uh, and I, and I think that, by the way, I mean, I do think they're doing a fantastic job with the, with the Bond films. You know, I think they, they, they're managing still to, to keep it relevant. And, absolutely. We, you know, we, 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 we sound like we're quite down on the crowd and, and, I mean, some of the movies are better than others, but but in general, yeah. I mean, they 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 have they have re, re, reinvigorated it and given it a new lease of life. Um, I think it's it's now due another yes. re, reinvigoration. I agree. In, uh, I think I, I do think happens. we can go back to just embracing James Bond and being being unashamedly. Hmm. That I get where the kind of the Craig era came from, which was a sort of more of a reaction to like nine eleven and world events and that kind of thing, which is what I think you know Steve was talking about with his question. Um, you know, mm. which is much more the kind of like, look, what are we reacting to now with James Bond? What what are spies about right now? You know, and yeah, the world events are kicking off. I mean, we have we are seeing lots of saber rattling going on between. Um, between Western democracies and um, Eastern communist regimes, I mean that is happening. You know, we've had that business with that. It was so tomorrow never yep. knows. I think I brought this up on the other live stream, but you know, the, the 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 British naval warship that was sailing through Ukrainian waters got well. Depends who you believe, but certain people say it got fired upon by Russian forces. Some people say it wasn't. The the British government said it wasn't fired upon, but uh, and it had the press on board, and it was like this debate over whether it was in Ukrainian yeah. waters or Russian waters because that depends on where you put the border and everything. And I'm like, that's fucking tomorrow never dies, and the press were reporting it, like, you know. And I was like, it's <laughs> tomorrow yep. never dies. What are you talking about? Yep. Like, the ship thought it was somewhere it wasn't, and it got fired on by t- you know. It's like we're, we're saber rattling here. This is the same, you know. Someone's trying to provoke a war. You know what the fuck? Um, so it's all relevant. Yeah, like, no. It's all, it's, it's still that relevant. Red, red, yeah, red, and I think if I, I I agree with you, we're just doing the uh, we're just we're just doing yeah, the yeah, truck yeah. on its hind heat thing. So, so let's you talk put some about window up as well for fuck's sake. Um, I I I um <laughs> I agree with you as well when you said about like the Tomorrow Never Dies pacing and that kind of thing. I want to see another film if we're talking about James Bond set across a few days where the stakes are really high easy to understand yep. and mean that something has to be done within 48 hours yeah let's do that let's do it's more work a yep. day i understand it's more um uh man on a mission but i we just need to get away from this goes rogue personal stakes stuff because that culminates in like i was your yeah. brother james all along the author of all your pain mm-hmm. is yeah. really all along no- I don't know about that. You know, it's just sort of like let's not, let's not do that. Like you know, let's let's not make. Let's have, I have to make everything be yeah. personal to James Bond. Let's, no. let's make something. It, it it ends up being it ends up negating yeah. everything they're trying to do. You know, they're trying to make it all dark, gritty, realistic, personal stakes, blah blah blah, and it ends up all coming around in this huge, manipulated, convoluted circle. Of of ridiculousness that it was all it was all a a, a jealous brother vendetta you know and you're like this is now you've gone silly now you you know this is more silly than anything that happened in the in the Roger Moore era I mean, if you're going to look at it as, a, it, yeah. as plotting it goes it goes it's silly I think yeah no I agree with you I think just embrace what you are and um, Colin McLean said this twenty U S dollar dues is there something to keep the lights on this week. Thank you very much, Colin. It says, also, what is some of your favourite Bond locations? The uh, monastery in Meteora, Greece, from For Your Eyes Only, is one of my favourites and provides one of the best mm. climbing stunts. I agree. Yeah. I think that's fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, absolutely. That 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 puts uh, for your eyes only in a, yeah. in in in, oh, good, yeah. in a whole other class that sequence and that location. Yeah, no, I think I think you hit the nail on the head there, Colin. That indeed, no, so literally good. and metaphorically, I agree a hundred percent. Being being yeah. a Bahamian yeah. and actually um, knowing the huge connection that Fleming had to the Bahamas as well, um, which is where the whole Kevin McClory thing came from as well. I I I have to say the Bahamas is uh, is always going to be my favourite location for James Bond. You know, I mean, I think. Um, mm. yeah, Thunderball and Casino Royale obviously took place prominently there, but a lot of underwater second unit underwater stuff um, has been filmed there as well. So I'm 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 sort of duty bound to say the Bahamas, but um, but I like I I just as well though I like yeah I like again I'm not to talk about tomorrow never dies again, but I like it, it, James Bond going to Hamburg seems to work really well for me yeah. on like a faux, faux business thing yeah I love that yeah, yeah. absolutely I, I I I have to say I do have a, a soft spot oh, yes. for uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, the generic moon yeah. and that, the cape car fight is if it is dumb like, like you know, that I shot of Richard Gill going I love moon yeah. And then, like the stuntman does his that. giant leap, he's like, "Not <laughs> quite work." But um, I love. Do you know what I love about that more though? Is the, is That's when they're in that it. sort of observatory bit, and he's watching. I don't know why he feels the need to go several miles away from the airport to witness a plane taking off using a pair of binoculars. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter. Um, yep. I love. I love that shot of him watching the planes taking off, and then Holly Goodhead saying, "There goes Sanchez." Yeah, yeah. Hand, and yes. the photograph of the fire, yeah. which which Tim told me his dad had had a, a frame of that fiery hand because it's what they said the production house. was cursed from. Because I think I think yeah. it happens that when you see it on camera, I think it's out of just out of frame, so you don't see it on the frame. But obviously, the yeah. wide shot for the publicity still has that kind of three fingered fiery demon hand coming out of it. Yeah. Yeah, because this road was apparently cursed. A, a whole bunch of nuns died. Went off, went off, went nice. off the cliff edge in a minibus, and uh, but they, yeah, they said all kind, all kinds of other stuff were going on. Like trucks were moving on their own and spontaneously bursting into flames. All, all this wow. stuff was going on, so, and it all culminated in them doing that big stuff. I oh, mean, the explosions massive. in this, not just that last one with Sanchez, but. The other stuff with the tankers going up, it, the pyrotechnics are incredible. Oh god, here we are with with uh, Felix now. All well, happy, you know what I'm so sure lucky, again, James. So I guess I'm happy now. It's like, yeah, really? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, and then she's got Jub Jub, mm. so she's basically Selma <laughs> from The Simpsons. Um, yeah, <laughs> Jub Jub. <laughs> this is weird. I I will say. <laughs> She's written as very and much is, just oh, yeah, a sort of gold whole... thing. Like she just abandoned the iguana on the bar there, which I think is a bit not great. Um, but you know, she's yeah. shown as sort of very much <laughs> a vacuous, airheaded. You know, she like earlier that she yeah. has that line that just goes too far. Where she's like, "I just love James so much." It's like, mm, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. She's not like she she and uh, she is like Carrie Lowell is stunning, but she's also. She's she's a good actress and she's and and it's a char- it's a very great character. It's the it's the kind of character that every Bond girl said that they were and was never before since her. And I'm like, no, Carrie Lowell was was great. The other one, okay. I, I forget her name. She's she looks amazing, but she's not yeah. she's not got the chops. She's a bit yeah. She's she's kind of, she's kind of what everyone would accuse a Bond girl of being. Whereas uh, whereas Carrie Lowell is what a Bond girl usually. Eats. Is and mm. what they always proclaim to be. You and El Presidente will make an excellent couple. Or if he's a couple. <laughs> um, and then they go in, and then and then they just ruin it all by yeah. having the fish wink. At I us. mean, it's. I can see why. <laughs> Although I do, I do, I do like you having his last swig of the. Yeah, he was like, "Well, I'm getting swig fired when I get back to London, so I guess let's <laughs> get smashed." 
Because this was a real house, wasn't it? This the Sanchez house was a is a real house. Um, yeah. With the yeah. monorail. And then monorail. And there you go. Yeah. The thing is, you know that's from there. You go, the and that's actual the... fountain that's there that does wink. And it's probably real, but it's one of those like bank put it in the film. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't know. We don't have to know that yeah. it's a thing that really does that. Because uh, yeah, because those things were really yeah. Because that fish was really there. I, th- I think I've in one of the behind the scenes docs you see the location scouting videos of it and, and yeah and those fish are there they didn't put that in so what did they put a winking eye on one of them or did I'm guessing they maybe they did but you're right it's like it's like John Glenn going look it winks let's have put it, have in it the wink film. at that'll the audience be, at that'll the be end. our button on the end of the film uh, like, okay <laughs> no. sorry what, what were we we're doing the the gritty realistic bond. Is that yeah, I mean, is that what we're doing? Even, even in this, it's, you've still got the the ghost of Roger Moore. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Well, and it's yeah, and you know, John John Glenn, bless me, who I think who and I give John Glenn a lot of props uh, for elevating the action of uh, of Bond because I I think if you look at if you look at For Your Eyes Only, I think the action really steps up a notch. Um, like, like from because you had fast action in previous Bonds, but it was usually yeah, sped up yeah, photography yeah. was doing a lot of the work. Whereas I think it's like, I think the skiing stuff in For Your Eyes Only is tremendous, really freaking, and it, and it just keep and it's relentless, it just keeps going, and it's like, but it's but it's brilliantly shot. I mean, I really think that he he did bring the action into a whole new level. So I got so I get I get John Glenn a lot of props for that, but he but he did hold on to some of the silliness and and like at the beginning having Felix standing in the helicopter with the two hats going eh, before he jumps out. You're like, why did you want yeah, to so, do that? Yeah. <laughs> Need those cutaways, those moments. But um, but in but all in all, you know, like I said, you know, like yeah, everyone slags off a lot, a lot of the John Glenn ones, but I, you know, it's like I say, it's like even a View to Kill, which which I love, I have nostalgic love for View to Kill. I totally accept why it's rubbish, and it is rubbish in so many ways. But Christopher Walken is tremendous in it, and and the the fight on the top of the Golden Gate Bridge, and and that I'm like, you can't, that's you know. I always, and I still to this day, even when I'm talking to people about how we shoot some some stuff, how we how we make the illusion of of, of something grand, I, I use that as a template. I say, what what's the, the Golden Gate fight in View to a Kill? The way it's it's a set cut into cut with a location, into cut with one shot of a real location with two stunt guys just going ugh, 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 because they can't do any more because they're actually on top of the Golden Gate Bridge. And and a, a set that you build and how you intercut. Yeah, there's some dodgy rear projection that, that kind of ruins it a bit. But in terms of how you do that, I think it's a masterclass of how you intercut a a, a stage set with a location with it to pull off a a, a very tense because it's mm. so high sequence. And and I you know so and so John Glenn was great at that stuff because he was an editor. He had an edit, editing background as I do. So I so I appreciate him bringing that that kind of um, thinking to to a lot of the action sequences and so yeah I like John Glenn I like his movies and and but but he he did have a tendency to 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 uh, halt throw in some of the no, silliness. I mean, fair enough. I, I, you know, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I, I think John Glenn. I don't think you can say he was out and out terrible because he's made some of the best I, I mean I, I think Living Daylights is definitely up there I can't remember when I did my because one of the things I did for yeah. Patreon was I did my ranking of James Bond films and I can't remember where I put Living Daylights but it was definitely getting on for if not inside the top five I can't 
where where it was. Yeah, it is for me. I, I did a I did a I did a ranking of the Bond films a while ago, and, and yeah, I think it was from Russia Real Love, Spy Love Me, um, and I think and then Living Daylights, and then uh, mm. might have been Casino Royale. I can't remember, but yeah, but it's it's almost like they all they all they all got their they've all. They've all got their. I think, pop yeah, I think, to, yeah, because I don't think it really matters what order they go in for me, but that top five has to have Casino Royale, Goldeneye. Ah, see, that's the thing for me, it's like, mm, Goldeneye or Tomorrow Never Dies. Probably Tomorrow Never Dies. Yeah, yeah, Tomorrow Never no, Dies. Sorry, yeah, Casino Royale. And Tomorrow Never Dies, I think. No, I think, I, sorry, I'm. Living Daylights was below, yeah. So it was, it was from Russia in Love, Spy Love Me, Tomorrow Never Dies, uh, Living Daylights. No, I could get on board with that. I think, I think it's got to be right. in there. It's got to be, um, Casino Royale, Tomorrow Never Dies, Living Daylights, um, from Russia in Love, and yeah, probably Spy Who Loved Me. I feel, I feel duty bound to put that in there, even though. No, I don't. Do you know, I don't feel duty bound to that at all. I think that's a fantastic movie, and I think it should be in there. And I think because if you're going to pick a Roger Moore film, because they were all, I mean, I have a lot of. I've, it's like I've grown to love Octopussy a lot more recently and stuff like that. And Few Eyes Only, I think, is really fantastic. Yeah. But um, I think if you're going to yeah. pick one Roger Moore film that's really emblematic of his run, I think it's got to be Spider Man. It? it has to be. Well, it's interesting because I. So I remember when I did that list, and and it's a, and it's a list that I I didn't like throw together. It's like I did it, and then I pondered it, and I did it, and did it. And I, and like I said, I can't. It was a while ago. I can't remember exactly how it was, but I I was I, I I did find it quite remarkable how how it was actually quite Roger Moore top heavy. But it was a lot more Roger Moore above Connery films, and even though even though Connery did my favourite, and Connery I would consider a better Bond. I just just an entertainment but at the end of the day the entertainment factor of of some of the key more movies um just mm. just won out for me like, I, I can remember it's like so like I, I I would sit I could sit here and and tell people why moonraker is actually yeah. bloody great and it, and moonraker is the most derided of all bomb movies Right. I think Die Another it, it, Day is probably people more. People hate it. So, but 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 I it's think, up yeah, there definitely. Probably, I mean, yeah, I, I, probably right. I, and I don't agree right. with that either. As absolutely. But, and I'm and I'm like, no, it's actually it's great. And the and then the 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 miniature effects, the 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 all in camera miniature effects, all done by uh, uh, by double exposure. Or, no, not double exposure. Quadruple gillion mm. exposure. Are incredible. Derek Meddings absolutely knocked it out of the park in that movie, and um, it's, no, I'm with it's, you on that. I, 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 I love I'm it. A big, I'm a I big supporter it. of Moonraker. Actually, I think I think well, it's uh, yes, it's a sort of retread of Spy. Um, no, and Pigeon in it, absolutely it's ridiculous. It's mm. it's got that, but I don't know. It's it's. I can look beyond those 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 things and see no, there's something some great, else. There's some great adventure stuff in there for Weird. sure. Um, no, I I I a big fan. Um, Josilla sent us five US dollars and says just throwing out some scratch in place of jub jub jokes. So thank you very much. Uh, the Wing Kong Exchange <laughs> once again, and I'm just trying to get to it. Sorry, my, I'm getting a lot of lag myself from my laptop that just won't respond now, and I'm trying to. There we go. Come on. Oh, okay. Five five pounds. Thank you very much. Says Brad. Can we get you Duncan and Rich for Star Trek Four watch party, please? Don't worry. <laughs> Absolutely. I I adore Star Trek Four. It's Star Trek Four is and I, people are bored of me saying this. I think now, but it is in my opinion the nicest film ever made. And it's it's just a romp, and it's Star Trek being irreverent and. Funny and and genuinely funny, genuinely funny. It's one of the funniest films ever, and uh, and it but it doesn't betray. But it's the characters mm. being the characters, and 
mining the comedy of the characters in a situation. It's 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 a masterclass in in how do you how do you change almost change the genre of of something with established characters and and you keep those characters true to themselves. They never betray the characters in any way whatsoever, but make it funny. It's it's a masterclass in that. It's brilliant. Very cool. Anyway, that's <laughs> so yeah. I'll I'll do Star Trek Four watch by nice any day of the week. Um. Okay. Cool. Well, should we should we give it five minutes and then um, wrap up? Is that cool with you? Yeah. If people another can five, can stand yeah, another five another minutes. Five of our jitteriness. Yeah. I'm so sorry for the the quality of our broadcast. I believe the sound <laughs> has been okay, but I think the video has been a bit janky. Um, Steve Allen says, Duncan, can I just ask who holds back the electric car and who makes Steve Gutenberg a star? Um, we do, Stephen Allen. We do. <laughs> can I say oh. I've met Steve Gutenberg in the most unlikeliest of places? Um, I met him in Stevenage. <laughs> he was shooting a movie in Stevenage, and we went along to visit the set because. I knew a couple of people working on it, and and I was working with with a producer at the time that was that had a post production facility, and they were thinking about it. So um, yeah, so I went along to the a set visit and met Steve Gutenberg in Stevenage. Ha- sat down with him for lunch. Um, I, I I I said to him, he came up, he came up, he was chatting, and I and uh, and I said, oh, I said, I said, I said, dude, I'm a I'm a huge fan. Um, and he and he turned around to everyone and said, "said See, I have one." He was great. He was he was really lovely. Um, but I managed to say to him, "I said, I said, I said no. I said no. Seriously, mate, you've got, you've uttered one of the greatest lines in cinema history in Cocoon, where you say, if this is foreplay, I'm a dead man. It's uh, it, it's it's brilliant.'" And he laughed his ass off when he went, "That is a great line." I said, "It is. Yeah, it's great to be able to have that exchange with Steve, Gut- Steve Gutenberg in Stevenage was he's, one of the most he's, amazing he's things that ever happened." British town namesake. Um, that's pretty cool, man. That's a, that's a great <laughs> Steve Gutenberg story. There you go. Well, I bet that was more than you bargained for when you asked that question. But um, <laughs> there you go. Yes, yeah, she's a, um, Steve Allen says, well, that's taken a turn. Um, and I agree. A, a wonderful <laughs> one down Brad Alley, which we should all be so lucky to, to visit every now and again. Um <laughs> It's a dark, a dank, dangerous just adjacent wormhole. Adjacent to you um, Grope Cunt Lane, which is a real place <laughs> in, uh, in London. Um, and, uh, I'm not making that up. Though. I, I, is it still called that? I don't know. Not been there for a while, but it was, of course, the, uh, the, the, the prostitution <laughs> hotspot of uh, wherever. Um, yeah, lots of weird stuffs happened in Stevens because, of course, I, I guess Superman Four was filmed around. <laughs> that neck of the woods anyway yeah well that was yeah me on yeah was but there was more north the, the of it but it, stuff yeah. was built you can see because they it, probably came down yeah all right because yeah, when you're down, going down the six, not 605 what is it the road that goes the, if you're heading towards Luton and Stevenage in that area I think off to the left is where all the fields all the arable land that's off to the left there includes in, in there somewhere is the Kent farm mm-hmm. um yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Stevenage is the centre well, of the universe, universe now. It yeah, appears. Anyway. Um, but yeah, the <laughs> Gutenberg <laughs> Superman Four universe. Um, <laughs> it is indeed. It is indeed. Well, look. Um, I think. I think that was. I enjoyed that. I've enjoyed myself this evening. Thank you very much. You, but you, you and, and Mark Price are wonderful guests, and we're super, super, super <laughs> grateful to you guys for for stepping into the breach in uh, Richard's absence I'm sorry that my apparently shitty yeah. home broadband that normally manages okay I guess it's the upload speed that's the problem that we download but um, yeah I'm sorry right. if it's, it's produced if he results well everyone seems to be having fun on the, the chat thing. so I don't think that's the main thing but it's know. great to talk James Bond matter, and, you, know. you know I don't do it very often so um, you know thank you yeah, well, look, yeah. If we want to do more Bond Bond stuff, and you want to bring yeah. me in on it, well, hopefully we can get in the room we'll together. That. I mean, that's I'll going happily. to be the next thing, isn't it? We want to get back to doing that and doing pre-recorded yeah. stuff and being in the 
we're not we're not far away from that happening so yeah we, we shall sounds good well guys i think we'll call that a night yeah. um Thank you all so much for everyone who turned up and those of you who um, obviously gave Super Chats, those of you who gave up on our PayPal, thank you so, so much. And, um, yeah, I hope it was fun. We had great... Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Everyone's so kind on the comments. Everyone like saying thank you, Brad, and all that. Thank, thank you, guys. It's wonderful. And uh, and I love it when I when you're doing stuff and I, 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 I will, yeah. I'll, I'll pop in on the chat every now and then, just... You know, I don't get I don't get to watch the whole thing, but if I'm if I know you both to that, it's great. So um, no, we love that yeah. too, and we yeah. quite often we're like, "Is Brad still here?" <laughs> right, let's let's say poo and Willie we'll now. Um, so we, we're, we're quite naughty when you leave, <laughs> but I don't know why we feel like there's this kind of like almost pedagogical eye of Sauron cast upon us when you're in the chat, which doesn't make any sense because you're just as silly as us. Um, Dude, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so so much for for, Always. for being Always. down and, and and look, let's let's get in the room together at some point. Let's get in the room together and make a film, please. Can I have a job? Nah. Is what I'm saying. Nah. Um, and um, <laughs> it's it's just lovely to talk Bond with you. And it's, do you know what? it's lovely to talk Dalton Bond with you as well because I think um, it's very much yes. in our respect. Do you, Brad and I got hammered as we want to do. Um, I guess years ago now. I don't, I don't think. <laughs> no, well, of course, what well, were we to? Yes, we, we got hammered on um, Horlicks and um, <laughs> at Brad's, and we just stuck the living daylights on. And I don't think, you know, we probably went to bed at 5 a.m., um, but we just ordered pizza right. and watched the living daylights, and it was brilliant. We did. Um, yeah, we just, so, yeah. I think I was taking photos of the screen of the uh, of the, the fight on the cargo net and posting it, going, "I don't care what you say. This is one of the greatest action scenes ever." I was like, "Yeah, yeah. very drunk." That happens when I'm drunk and we're watching an awesome movie. I just want to share oh, it with the world. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Um, I'm going to attempt to smash cut to credits now. For I have them. I hope it works. If it doesn't. Oh well, because uh, my technical skills are lacking. But there you are. See, I am an in front of the cameraman, not a behind the cameraman. So it's we end it. Um, thank you all so much. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, that one one of us deserves should be in front. One of us should be behind. That's that's, that's it. You're doing it again. Stop with the self-deprecating. Don't do it. We love you. We love you, Valverde. <laughs> we love you, Bradley Watson. Thank you all so much for for coming down and hanging out. And um, we'll catch you all next week. Ciao, ciao.